Self support and defend the Constitution as a boy, and that I will faithfully discharge my duties. I'll faithfully discharge my duties.
Aloha Kakahiaka, the meeting of the Hawaiian Homes Commission is called to order. Before we move forward this morning, I would like to ask Auntie Pauline Namuo if you'd please do a pule for us, if you could. Aloha o te mutia kua e kikini mai ia kako, the love of God in Boulder. E pule kako, dear Lord, Give us the strength and courage to do our best in working together for the good of our people. Send blessings and love to everyone and keep our families, friends, and neighbors safe and healthy wherever they may be. May we live our lives in helpful, compassionate ways that help all we come into contact with to improve the world we live in. And especially bless our new director, Ikaika Anderson. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pauline, mahalo nui. The meeting is being held live and in person at Halepolo E, Kapolei, Oahu, and virtually via interactive conference technology on Zoom today. I am Ikaika Anderson, Chairman Designate of the Hawaiian Homes Commission. And today's date is January 17th, 2023. Time is 9.36 a.m. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Wu. Here. Commissioner Helm is on his way. Commissioner um, Kaleki. Aye. Commissioner Kaupu. Here. Commissioner Freitas. Here. Commissioner Nevis. Aye. Commissioner Namu'o. Here. Commissioner Terbuya. Here. And Chair Anderson. Here. We have eight members present. Thank you very much. Commissioners, anybody here with you folks today? If not. Just a quick announcement. Uh, we will be taking a recess this morning from about 9.55 to 10.30. I believe to return to my office and we'll be resuming uh, right after that. The commission will also recess around noon for lunch to convene an executive session for approximately 90 minutes. Uh, we have no community meeting in January. Our next meeting is scheduled for February 21st at Couple A Intermediate. May I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Do we have unanimous consent? No. Thank you very much. The agenda is hereby approved. Members, uh, we do have staff today from the chair's office joining us. We have Deputy Director Designate Katie Lambert Ducat here to my left. We have my Chief of Staff and Executive Assistant, uh, Alan Kipua Teixeira, as well. My Executive Secretary, Jean Jeremiah, and Assistant Chico Figueredo are back in the office this morning. Before we move forward, we'd also like to thank all of the staff here for helping us to set up this morning and ensuring that our room was ready and that we're able to conduct this meeting going forward for our beneficiaries. So all of you folks, mahalo nui for all of your efforts. And we'd also like to thank all the commissioners for being here as well. Mahalo nui for your service. Are there any edits to the December 19th and 20th, 2022 <clears throat> minutes? Yes, Commissioner Teruya. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, page 11 of 45. It's not a correction. I'm requesting a follow up from staff okay. on this um, paragraph one, and it states the department submittal form 19 to be approved. Um, it also states that the new director will prioritize this and to submit to the new um, budget. So that could be followed up by the new director. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, another one on page 16 out of 45. Yes. Paragraph uh, one. Yes. Top paragraph. So Chair Isla stated that this project is not in compliance 
and does not have the land uh, deposition, the new director will have to provide a plan to the commission to bring in compliance. Um, I request that staff follow up with that. This is regarding the Kumu camp in Kauai. Yes. Okay. And then page 17 out of 45, paragraph 1234 under discussion, line 123456, line six to add in the 2018 regional plan. In other words, the Kupuna housing came up consistently in discussion with beneficiaries in the 2018 regional plan. I'd like to see that insert. And um, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Turio. Members, any further amendments or edits to the December 19th and 20th minutes of 2022? Oh, Chair. Yes. Um, just a comment on. Mr. Kelly, please proceed. Yeah. On page 37 of 45. Yes. Um, we talked about uh, information only, geothermal <coughs> investigation, exploration, Humula. We, we talked, the discussion was that staff would follow up. So I just wanted to, to mention that I'm looking forward to hearing a follow up on what's going on in this area. Okay, my staff will also note, uh, Commissioner, the point that you raised and also the point that uh, Commissioner Turuya made about staff follow-up. Uh, are you requesting that we have follow-up at the next meeting? Um, yes, uh, or whatever is most appropriate. I know we discussed it um, and it has to do with, I know staff, there was two appropriations. Well, one appropriation by uh, Senator De La Cruz for five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and my understanding is staff has done some preliminary work. We just haven't been briefed on that yet. Understand. And then there was the other communication with uh, Senator De La Cruz about two million dollars. So just interested in what the follow up is from the department. Okay. We will follow up with staff, and we'll get back with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, any further discussion regarding? the December 19th and 20th, 2022 minutes or any further amendments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are hereby approved. Members, are there any edits to the April 11th and 12th or May 23rd and 24th, 2016 minutes? Commissioner Teruya. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my question is, I don't understand why, again, April 11 and 12, 2016, and May 21, 24 is on the January 2023 agenda. In December, we went through this. It was voted on. It's in your minutes of December's minutes, and it was the motion failed. So the motion failed. And to see this back on January 23 agenda, can you explain to me how this um, item comes back to the agenda for commission to approve? I, I, I'm kind of lost on this one. Thank you very much, Commissioner Turia. Uh, the agenda was uh, finalized by our office. I'm happy to hear from commissioners as to any history that may have occurred with these minutes, but if the, if the desire of the commission Commissioner Turia is not to move forward with this at this time. I'm happy to entertain such a motion. So if you look at December's minutes, Mr. Chair, yes. page two out of 45, yes. the motion action was taken. It was, it was, there was a motion by Naumu. There was a second by Kaupu. Yes. And um, for the approval of 2026. And so if you look at the third line item, Chair Isla stated that the motion to approve the 2016 set of minutes failed. So with that statement, why again, this items for 2026 is on 23 agenda. And I, I'm not, I don't understand why when there's other minutes from 17 and 2018 minutes has not been approved. Why this particular month of minutes that we are approving for me, I, I wasn't a commissioner then. So I'm curious, what, why, why are we approving? A 2026 past minutes 
is there something in there that needs a commissioner commissioner's approval? I'm just curious because I'm not going to sit here as a volunteer to be liable passing something that I wasn't uh, sitting on the board at that time. So I just need clarification from staff. Commissioner Turia, that's a that's a fair point. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Turia. Uh, members, if we are uh, chair, Commissioner Kalekin, please proceed. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I know, I, I hear what Commissioner Turo is stating. Uh, we went through this several times and I, and I think maybe we can get help from, from AG, but my understanding is that the minutes needs to be approved, right? And for whatever reason, they weren't approved in 2016. All of us, I believe was not part of that commission, but as a matter of trying to follow the process, I think we stated something to the effect that I, for myself, I would say I would approve um, but with, with the point stating that I was not a commissioner, but I'm doing it for the process. So I don't know if, if that is correct, Ryan, or, or, or can you help us understand that? Deputy Attorney General, please proceed. So that is correct, Commissioner Kalikini, that these minutes need to be approved by the commission. Um, with regard to last month's approval, of minutes, those were for different months than the ones that are in the current um, agenda. So uh, the 2016 minutes from December were for January, February, and March 2016. Uh, the ones that are before the commission this month is for April and May. And if the commissioners can turn to the end of the minutes, uh, page, 41, page 41 of 45, The, me the, me the motion um, to approve the minutes were reconsidered. Uh, and those minutes for January, February, and March 2016 were approved. I'm sorry, can you, can you state that again, Mr. A.G.? On page 41 mm -hmm. of 45, mm -hmm. there was a motion for reconsideration of the minutes okay. for January, February, and March 2016. And that the, the minutes were then approved. So the motion failed and there was a reconsideration on yes. approving that. Who did the reconsideration of approving that? I believe the, the last vote was uh, moved by Commissioners Neves and Awo, who were not present at the time of the first motion, and that which is why the first motion that was was a fail it failed because there wasn't there was a four one or four zero one uh, four eyes zero nos one abstention and the um, two recorded absences. So you have five commissioners as a quorum. The vote was for zero abstain, so your motion failed, correct? That was in the first motion. Correct. A failed motion can be reconsidered at any time during- By the prevailing? By the, well, the cause of the motion was because of the absences and abstentions. There was no prevailing party in that situation. There was only eyes. There was no no's. So there was an, so the prevailing uh, commissioner would be what? Isn't that the abstain person? The abstaining and the absent. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner, any further discussion? I have another question then, Mr. Yes. Sir, since we're on correction of Commissioner past Tarina, minutes. Are we, are we 2023 are going to be able to see all these past minutes come back on this agenda for approval, like 2017? 2018 and maybe further back are we are we is your staff going to be putting all of these past minutes that wasn't approved with the past administration now then we'll go forward to be approved uh, is that your post plan uh, commissioner Turia, what we will do is have a review by staff of all minutes prior to my tenure that have not been approved analyzed We'll share the data with the commission as to which meeting minutes were not approved. I don't recall those dates off the top of my head. 
but I will have all of those examined. And for every set of minutes that wasn't approved prior to my time, we'll bring them to the attention of the commission before we proceed in this manner. So we'll do that going forward, Commissioner Torrio. Okay, but I, I think it may, I believe it would help the commission if we were all apprised ahead of time exactly which minutes have not been approved and give us some time to look them over and then decide how we want to proceed. Please, thank you very much. Absolutely. Chair, Chair can I ask uh, yes. Leah, so yes, you assuming that we go forward and approve this set that's proposed, I know you had a, you had a list of, of what was roughly, where, where are we on the, on the back minutes? What, what's left to be done after, after this set? 25 more meeting minute sets. So two meetings per set. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, she says the drafts are all up on the website and available to review. So that being said though, commissioners, what we will do is notify all of you folks of those dates so you're not fishing for dates yourselves. Staff will notify all of the commissioners of the dates and also point you in the direction of where these minutes can be found. And for any staff that, or excuse me, for any commission commissioners that require a hard copy that will be provided to you. And then chair, you require. It, it are two sets of minutes being presented per meeting just so it's digestible by the commission and not how come not all one time? I, I guess that'd be too much. That'd be overload. Uh, that, uh, that I have not yet determined. Mm. I, I'll seek your, your folks' guidance on that. Or, or maybe, I'm, I'm sorry to keep asking Leah, but Leah, was that the thought? That there was going to be two sets per, per meeting until we get caught up? Um, our former executive assistant, Joby Masalatani, is doing the review of the minutes because she, she was the chair at the time. So she's presenting two to three sets per meeting. And Sheena Fawye with the, with the other Correct. ones. Okay. Um, so I'm, commissioner, I'm let my, our team will get a better handle on this to see exactly where we're at okay. with that review. I'm sorry. Commissioner Torrio, please. What did you say Sheena Fawye? So she's reviewing these past minutes? Is that what I heard? She's reviewing them for accuracy since she was the chair at that time. Is she still with the department? No, Commissioner Turia. Okay. okay. So getting back, I'm old fashioned. I'd like a hard copy. You're entitled I to need, that. I need the pala pala. <laughs> You're Thank entitled you. to that. Thank you. And you'll get it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yes, can I, can yes, I just make a comment? Uh, my, Please. My, my understanding is, is the approval of minutes is a policy that the commission had uh, decided some time ago. Is that correct, um, Ryan? Um, approval of minutes is actually under the administrative rules. Okay. So I stand corrected. So my understanding is approval of these minutes, we're not proving the action that was taken during these, these meetings. All we're approving is the minutes. It's a procedural process that was failed to be done in, in prior meetings. So I'm not going to be responsible for what actions were taken because the actions were taken by the commission. I'm just prov proving a, a document moving forward. Just a clarification. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Um, can I say one more thing? Commissioner, yes, go ahead. Okay, so bringing that you said that, Commissioner Nevis, I'm curious because a lot of times in the last administration, I have we have been corrected that the commissioner had approved this project. Commissioner had approved this from the former chair. So... What you're saying, Dennis, is that we're not approving any projects. We're just approving the content of the minutes. Is that it? Yes. Mr. Kanakoli, is, is that correct? Approval of minutes is you're, you're approving the accuracy of the record. Um, whether, whether you're taking a policy action is a whole separate matter. Um, that's not what the approval of minutes is. It's you are... You're approving the draft form of the record to finalized form of the record. So are we are we following Robert rules just just so I know how to move forward? Is this is this commission under the Robert rules 
uh, policy. That's not in the administrative rules. However, Robert's rules of um, order are used as guidance for these types of um, public agency hearings or meetings. And even sunshine, we are under the sunshine guidance. Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chair, Chair very good. Uh, yes, Commissioner Wong. So uh, Ryan, this question is for you further clarification. So um, what we are approving is the publication of the minutes. Uh, yes, you're, you're approving the conversion of draft minutes to finalized minutes, right. which are published on the, um, the DHHL website. Or okay, so in, in that approval, Ryan, um, if we were not serving as commissioners back then, we're just approving the publication. If we were not serving as commissioners back then, we are not responsible for any actions taken by a prior commission is my mm -hmm. question. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Members, any further discussion? <clears throat> Chair, if, if I may, I just want to yes, state for the record, I know this came up and this has been at past commission meetings and this is not uh, you know the discussion and especially my comments not meant as a criticism of you or the or the staff at all this is something this is just uh something we got to clean up over time too and we will yeah and um so thank you yeah my administration will clean this up i assure you um we are even open to special meeting if, if necessary to address this matter so that is another option that we could utilize to take care of this so that we're not overburdening our beneficiaries with having to go through all of this at each and every meeting. So that is an, uh, that is an option. If the commission would allow me to undertake it, I'm happy to have that discussion as we go forward with staff and with all of you commissioners, that may be a more efficient way to handle this matter. Okay. Members, any further discussion on this matter? If there is no further discussion, May I get a motion to <clears throat> approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Do we have unanimous consent? Abstain. Abst abstention from Commissioner Turuya. Do we have any other objections or abstentions? Noting the abstention of Commissioner Turuya, the minutes have been approved. Okay, members, as I noted at the top of the agenda, we would take a recess at approximately 9.55. It's now 9.57. We'll reconvene at approximately 10.30. We'll be back shortly. Commission is in recess.
Please. The meeting, please return to order. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner. <coughs> yes. yes. Mr. Please Mr. Chairman, if I may, before you um, move forward on the agenda, um, I just wanted to, um, I, I wanted to say, and I wanted to bring up before we start moving on this agenda is that um, I want to commend one of the staff um, that uh, is no longer with this department and you know, really thank him for his service of commitment, which is Cedric Duarte, um, finding out that he's no longer with the Department of Hawaiian Homes. Um, but um, just to really you know, thank him for all his work that he has done through the years that I have served, his professionalism, his kindness, his, he's always been on top of things. Um, and um, it, it's pretty sad that he left uh, you know, with this administration, but um, just thanking him for his service here and servicing the commission whenever we needed him and also the beneficiaries. I think that was so important. So I, I just wanted to voice that on record and thank him for all that he has done throughout his service. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Chair, if, Chair, if I could. Yes, you may. Yeah, Please, um, Commissioner Turiya Mahalo for that acknowledgement. I too, um, when we discovered that Cedric is no longer with us, I did want to take some time to honor him, honor his work, honor his professionalism and the contributions he has made to this commission, the department, but I think most importantly to our beneficiary communities. So uh, Cedric, you're not here today, but if you're listening, mahalo for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Chair. Mahalo nui for your manao. Chair. Members. Yes, <clears throat> Commissioner Helm. Aloha, Hello, good Chair. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to uh, ditto what uh, Tura and uh, Awo said about uh, Cedric. Uh, he's going to be missed and uh, appreciated all his uh, hard work. You know, he was a very... Uh, uh, a great uh, public relation person. So, uh, and and you know, and he responded when when we had asked him to respond to our beneficiaries when they had some concerns. So, I really appreciate his work, and we're going to miss him. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Thank Commissioner Helm. Chair, yes, I'd, I'd like to um, I'd like to respond to that that whole process. You know, there's it was interesting that before this meeting. Um, I had the opportunity to watch a, a Netflix video and uh, it really um, sort of hit me. It was between the Dalai Lama and, um, and uh, Desmond Tutu. It's their first meeting of these two gentlemen. Um, Dalai Lama, the, the uh, recipient of um, <clears throat> a very prestigious award, but they talked about, they talked about joy and when they asked them what they thought, what was joy? They said, joy is here. It's in what I consider our mana. There's a flame there that, that they both felt was important. How do you express joy on how you treat an individual, a family member, a community, <clears throat> an organization? Um, I feel that that his contribution to this organization, to our beneficiaries, to our Lahui, um, was very, very important. He was very articulate. I represented the, the chair on, on several occasions uh, on the island of Kauai. Um, and uh, he guided me through those things. Nevis, don't put your foot in your mouth. Um, but he was, uh, he was very instrumental. Uh, very likable. He was a, a great speaker. Uh, he handled uh, all of our uh, our um, our meetings when we had uh, community meetings. He's very articulate, very respectful, and I think he's going to be missed. Just want to make that statement. Thank you, sir. Mahalo, Commissioner for your Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, um, on, on this issue, I I, I have part question and then. Um, you know, and then part comment. The comment is, I agree that uh, Cedric was a valuable uh, member of the staff and, and was of service to the beneficiaries, to the commission, um, to all of us. Um, 
the the administrative uh, process of of uh, letting someone go. Um, my my question is, and when when you have a commission like like we do for Hawaiian Homes, uh, DLNR has a <clears throat> has a board. Um, are, are we supposed to? Do we have Kuleana for for those kind of decisions, the termination and letting people go? Are, are we supposed to now ratify whoever's decision was to to let Cedric go, or do we do we delegate that to the chair? Or I'm just not certain. Mr. Kopu, mahalo for the question. Uh, as the in my capacity as the director designate of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, I do serve as the administrator of the department. Mm -hmm. And in that role as the administrator of the department, we have, our team has uh, personnel, personnel decisions that are made in that regard. But if there are any questions amongst the commissioners, I would be more than happy to. I'll talk story with you folks. Uh, we need some guidance. I, I would seek guidance mm -hmm. from our deputy attorney general on how we do that legally. I'm not sure if we'd have to speak in executive session as this is a personnel matter, but I am more than happy to talk with you folks and answer any questions. That is that is my job. And if there are any questions that any of you commissioners have, uh, it's more than fair for you folks to bring them forward. And I would be absolutely okay with that, sir. Model chair. Thank you. Chair. Mm -hmm. If yes, I, Commissioner if, Evans. If I may, um, may say something. In, in yes. The Sunshine Law 92 5 um, <clears throat> A2, the, the, uh, the commission has the right to have a special meeting on these matters. And I says, suggest not on this specific matter because it's a private matter, but we should have a discussion to discuss uh, hiring and firing and the reasons for with the administration. We don't have any jurisdiction over what you do. But we'd like to know why it was done. That's absolutely fair, Commissioner Evans. Right. Thank you, sir. Fair. Thank you, Chair. I just, I just want to close with- Commissioner Toruga. Thank you. Um, I just want to close with one statement and um, being in the government for, for a while and retired from the government, you know, we have employees that are exempt. And so, you know, these employees, I guess, and we can discuss this further, but, um, and just listening to your WAM, your WAM Senate hearings and listening to all of this on, on payrolls and vacancy. But I, I think that this department and along with the commission should, should participate in looking at um, the staff and the exempts that you have and the, the acting <laughs> since I've been, a, a commissioner in 2019, I always, that's all I hear is I'm an acting, acting, acting. I mean, how long you gotta be an acting um, staff here? I think uh, civil service should be opened up to the staff. I mean, um, and that's something this administration to take a look at, Mr. Chairman, is that looking at your exempts and, and looking at civil service and qualifying them to move to civil service in this department finally, because for years, that's all I hear is they have acting positions and I, I just don't quite understand that part. So maybe that's another discussion in um, ES, in the executive, that would be a good dialogue that this commission should participate in the employees and should participate with the budget. It's part of the budget process to know about your staffing too. And so with that, I just close with that. So thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Tulio. Uh, Chair, if I could just say yes, a few more things. Um, yes, you may. Uh, to Commissioner Teruya's point, I, I think that's a really important point mm -hmm. because we are at a pivotal moment in our history with the funds that have been allocated. And we can only deliver based on the amount of positions that are available to the department to, to make good on the deliverables. So I too would like to participate in some kind of discussion that gives us greater assurances that we are moving in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Awo. Fair point and taken. Mahalo for sure. <clears throat> Members, any further discussion at this time? 
Thank you. Mahalo nui for your mana on everyone. Sincerely appreciate it. <clears throat> Members, we'll move to the public testimony on agendized items. The first testifier this morning, Aina Aloha Iwane, followed by Pat Kaha Viola'a. Aina Aloha Iwane. Aloha. Aloha Kakahiaka, please proceed. Aloha mai kako ena hoa kia aina o na aina pula pula. Hau oli makahiki ho and a happy new year. This is a combined testimony uh, for executive session item one, the discussion on DHHL informational briefing before the Senate committees on ways and means and Hawaiian affairs, as well as C2, the approval of chairman designate Ikaika Anderson's five point plan. <clears throat> It is befitting that I stand before you on this day, January 17th. It was only 130 years ago on this date that our kingdom, the kingdom of Hawaii was illegally overthrown. Our people thrown into a whirlwind of change and colonization, our aina taken, governance taken, and our culture suppressed. 28 years later, Prince Jonah Kuhio courageously championed the creation of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act resulting in the establishment of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and its commissioners. I am here today as a descendant of my Lahui, as a product of Kekauhale o King's Landing, and a continued loyalist inspired by James Kaulia, and evidence of our continued kuē o ka ho'ohui ana i ko Hawaii me Amerika a i ka aloha aina hopeloa. I will start today's testimony with my experiences navigating the department. I have spent some time navigating through the organizational chart within the department as I try to reach the appropriate staff to help with Maha and King's Landing Village concerns. I will share that it is not easy. It's very frustrating and I've often felt defeated having to return to the village with no answers and no second steps to move forward. That same lack of comprehension and guidance that I feel when working with the department's current processes was also reflected in the frustration of the senators during the informational briefing. The frustration is a result of the lack of accountability and the mismanagement of the trust, which is reflected in the low and also slow amounts of leases awarded versus the 20,000 beneficiaries waiting on the wait list. Staffing. DHHL is understaffed. Yes, and the recruitment to fulfill the open positions with qualified, passionate people from our communities is in need of restructuring and it really needs to be user-friendly. The asset <coughs> building sector, there isn't a cyclical relationship occurring in the asset building sector of the department. Outside investors are gaining profits from their sales made on leased Hawaiian homelands while Hawaiians wait and die on the wait list. If the amount of money being made by the leases don't directly equate to number of beneficiaries on the land, then the leasing strategies need to be changed. While the department also focuses on other asset building products for DHHL's portfolio. If Prince Kuhio Plaza is a strong asset source, then why isn't more Hawaii Island land being opened up? Environmental norms within the department. The current environment and norms within the department have prevented the ideologies of Prince Kuhio to be carried out. Basically, it takes too long and costs too much money that the department doesn't have to put Hawaiian beneficiaries on the land to rehabilitate. The current model of make money through the asset building sector to fund infrastructure to then award leases has not been working in an efficient manner. So it needs to be restructured. New products for homesteading need to be created it's infuriating that a Hawaiian has to be of a specific economic means in order to receive his trust benefits. Mm -hmm. And if a Hawaiian comes from a stronger <clears throat> economic place, he has the opportunity to accelerate his award. Why? My question is the department trying to cookie cutter the Hawaiian. Not all Hawaiians will rehabilitate in the same manner using the same homesteading product. Some beneficiaries, they like the Kapole model. It's very beautiful there. However, it requires a certain economic caliber. My father, he would go crazy there. Skippy Iwane, he needs aina. He needs bushes. He needs seclusion. 
He needs sustainability and independence through self-governance to be rehabilitated. Skippy Iwane rehabilitates through the Kuleana self-sustainable homesteading model, while other Hawaiians rehabilitate through the traditional homesteading model. Maybe there is an in-between product. The department needs to work with the current economic standing of its beneficiaries, creating more homesteading models and products that fit their abilities and not require them to be of a certain caliber. There is no economic quantum in the Rehabilitation Act. Undivided interest programs also need to be supported. Hawaiians are dying before receiving their trust benefits. 14 Maha beneficiaries have died over the past 40 years while residing in King's Landing, awaiting for homesteading awards to pass their trust rights over to their successors. 45% of King's Landing's current beneficiaries are over the age of 60. Undivided interest would help ensure these kupuna beneficiary trust rights while King's Landing goes to the homestead planning with the department. There is a mo'olelo that comes from our ohana lands of Ka'u here on Moko Keawe. The story is of Na'ali Ho'oluhi o Ka'u. There were three chiefs in Ka'u who mistreated their people. Hala'ea was a greedy chief, taking all the fish from his people. Ko'i Hala was an inefficient and indecisive chief, <coughs> wasting manpower and energy every day on useless work. Kohai Kalani was an obsessive chief, always seeking power. The people of Ka'u were tired of their leadership and did away with these chiefs, empowering the community of Ka'u to care for themselves without a chief. Ka'u Kumakaha. As we look to our kupuna and our mo'olelo for guidance, we see that the established norms within the department need to change. There is greed, there is inefficiency, indecisiveness, and the environment of authoritativeness. That which hinders the ideologies of Prince Kuhio and the rehabilitation of Hawaiians. We need to do away with these practices so that a collective abundance of prosperity and joy for Native Hawaiian beneficiaries can be nurtured. Mahalo keia ho'olohena, Thank you for your time and consideration. Meke aloha, he vahi pula pula aloha aina. Mahalo. Mahalo nui no kumanao. Next testifier, Pat Kahawaiola'a, followed by Richard Medeiros. <clears throat> And Uncle Pat, are you here? Okay, we will move to Richard Baderas, followed by Jojo Tanimoto. Okay, we will hold for Richard Baderas. And if Uncle Pat returns, Mr. Lowe, please let us know. <clears throat> okay. Moving to Jojo Tanimoto, followed by Na Koolani Warrington. Hi, this is Jojo. Aloha. Um, Please proceed. Aloha. Happy New Year. Nice to meet you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for allowing me this time. Uh, I live in Kauai High on the Big Island. Hmm. Oh, okay. Be sorry, but okay. There I am. Hello. Yeah. Aloha. I live in Kauai High uh, in the Kailapa Association. And the first thing I'd like to report is last month, the chairman had uh, decided that we have a water tank row. It has a gate and it has a lock and key. There were people using the gate. They have keys and the keys were supposed to be rescinded. Well, for the two weeks of holiday, firecrackers and whatnot, uh, people were up the road. So they got keys and they're not supposed to. They were supposed to change the lock. So I called the police department a few times because of the fireworks. There is no access to water in that area. It is an ROE with a, a branch up there. 
and not supposed to have anybody. Okay, for for the holiday, there's nobody to call except the police. So I did, and I'd like some help with trying to get an emergency road so that those of us that live in this subdivision between two gulches can get an exit out of here in case there is fire or accident or flooding or our houses get damaged by windstorm and stuff like that. I have not had any contact from the department, which is also something that the commission helped us get direction on didn't happen. I'd like to echo what um, I know Aloha just said about having all these revenue and whatnot. <clears throat> well, there's people here that Hawaiian homes take care of first, but we have no water for the association. So my second thing is if we can have some direction to start moving towards getting uh, more potable water. And I mean, it's for the beneficiaries and I guess it could be others, but basically it's for the beneficiaries because we pay private costs now and they can turn us off at any time and we have no access to anything, period. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask that was also agreed to and thank you to the commissioners for this help is to research the um, the fees to the Punanaleo or Waimea rental. Uh, there's a discrepancy with the other schools on Hawaiian homeland, but these put things, that's their <clears throat> function to teach the Hawaiian language, but they are getting charged so much, they could actually use the funding. Nobody called them, nobody called me. And I, I hope that's one of the things that you're gonna change within your department. Um, even though it's staffing, at least they can use the telephone and keep us up to date in this commission. Uh, so that would be three of the subjects that I really wanted to get to. And I hope for some direction from you going forward. The association had our meeting last night and those things are on the agenda as the most priority in Kauai High, especially for Kailapa. And we have gotten nowhere for two years, not even from the staff. I gotta say that at least um, the planning department has been getting back to us, but we are stuck. So um, commissioners, please, we can use your help. We need water out here and we need to get out of this subdivision <clears throat> and Kauai High. I really look for some um, direction, thank you. Mahalo nui for your mana on. So, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Then. Commissioner Teruya. So, being that she brought up concerns of that, are, are, are we now going to at least defer or refer, refer uh, Ms. Tanimono to a staff at least uh, to go over some of these concerns she brought? <coughs> um, I understand she hasn't had contact, was difficult. Um, having contact with staff on some of these concerns. Um, and um, so are you, where, where do we go from here? I mean, we continue to listen to these concerns, but I wanna know what is the next step for them? Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Fair question, um, Commissioner Torrio. Uh, our staff <laughs> will get, um, Auntie Jojo's contact information, I imagine we have it, staff. And my staff will reach out to her, Commissioner Torrio. Okay, yeah. We'll get the concerns definitively from her in a, con in a conversation between her and my staff. Okay. Yeah. We'll route those to the appropriate DHHL staff. And if you have any questions after that, Commissioner Turia, please let us know. But my staff will be following up with her. Yeah, that would be great because again, I don't, I really don't want to come again next month and then listen to Auntie Jojo and him want to bring up these concerns again that no one contacted her. I think a lot of the beneficiaries, they 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 just want somebody to contact them, follow up. And that's that's all they're asking instead of just sitting there waiting and so this is the problem that we need to continue to fix and move forward is 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 communication 
And um, if we can follow up, I really appreciate that. Commissioner Turia, we will follow up. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Eti Jojo. Thank you. I really appreciate that. will follow up with you. Thank you. I assure you, our staff will follow up with you this week. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner can, I, can, I, can I just add that uh, um, we appreciate the department following up. I'd like to have a, uh, at, our, at least at our next meeting, department uh, advise the commission on what actions being taken and what is the time frame for fixing some of these issues that uh, that that Anthony's talking about. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Nevis, we can we will Thank do you. that. Thank you, Chair. You know, and I think Thank just jump, jump in real quick. I think Please. what she was bringing up the Punanaleo, um, the Punanaleo project, and comparing, um, they were researching. Why does Punanaleo pays large fees of rental where KS, I think the problem was with KS, they don't pay any fees, is that it? Somebody, maybe Kahana can help us with that, land division. I think that was um, a dispute that Punanaleo was paying a larger fee and you have Kamehameha School was paying lesser fee and they're, they're, they got a lot of money, KS. Let's try them. That's Sorry, right. Kahana Elvinio from our our acting management yeah. uh, division administrator. Uh, yep. Mr. Robin, can you answer that question? Again, thank you for that point, Commissioner Teruya. Yes, um, Kamehameha Schools does have a general lease as compared to a license. Um, back in 2011, when we extended Punanaleo's, I think it was 2011 or 2012, when we extended Punanaleo's uh, term, uh, they have a license. Um, at that point in time, um, the commission back then had asked for a step uh, rent for them. So, and that's how that print uh, establishment came up. So, so, so Mr. Albino, does the, does Kamehameha schools pay rent? They pay, I believe it's a dollar a year. And Punanaleo pays? Um, I think it's $900 a month. There you yeah. go. Okay. And this was approved 2011, 2012? Right around that time. And I can, I can provide the information, the background, all that stuff. And at that point in time, when that uh, administration did come in, um, it was it was. Uh, so just one, just yeah. one follow-up question I have yeah. from that. And if you, if you don't have the answer today, that's okay. But okay. you could get back with us. Historically, what was the reason provided versus what was the reason provided when one organization paid a nominal rent of say a dollar a year versus another organization paying either fair market value or significantly higher? Generally, what's the reason for that? Um, again, at that point in time, um, when the term of that license to Punanaleo was um, extended, yes. um, they did have a provision in their license where um, the commission could or uh, the, the, the division could consider a rent. And at that time, um, the commission had, you know, said okay to that. When does Punanaleo's lease come up again? Um, shoot, I, I don't have that offhand. I can get that to you, though. If you could get that to us, and also I'd be interested to know if this commission could revisit that decision sooner if we wanted to. Okay. So those are the two questions I have. One, oh, the term the term of the lease when it comes up again and yeah. two, if this commission can revisit it prior to the okay. end of the lease, if we desire to. Can do. Chair. Thank you. Chair. Commissioner Helm followed by Commissioner Cole. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. I, did, I uh, agree with that. Uh, so that would be great for us to go and revisit this because it's really important that they be consistent all, all right. around. You know, we're, we're charging less with some Punana Leo organizations and some are not so it's, it's kind of like not consistent mm -hmm. so i agree thank you thank you uh, commissioner, sure. uh, commissioner Awo. oh kalama you want to go um so yeah so um kana as i recall i think it was sometime last year we we were in waimea mm -hmm. when that issue was raised right and the commission did express concerns about mm -hmm. the disparity between Bishop Estate and Punana Leo having to pay so much. Correct. And so beyond that expression of concern, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I don't know what ever happened to it. So here we are today, and I think this is a good day because the chair is asking that we revisit this issue with the commission. So I, I support that request. 
and and I do think it's the kind of disparity that needs a resolution. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Chair. If I may, yes, uh, Mr. Kano, when you when you come back with the information, yes, uh, I believe there's a difference in the disposition. One is a lease. Correct. One is a license. Correct. I think that is the genesis for why there's a uh, dollar uh, per year versus something closer to market. Yes. Um, so the question may be whether the Punanaleo license can be elevated to a lease and put on par with commitment. I'm, I'm not asking you mm -hmm. to answer that, but part of the information coming back should be this license versus lease and what, what that means for right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Fair enough. And members, Thank I, you. I, certainly, I certainly don't profess to have all of the answers today, yeah. but I uh, do believe it's extremely important that we ensure as a commission that our licensees, as well as our lessees, are treated fairly. And I, I just want to make sure that we do everything possible to make certain that that's happening. And if any of us have any discomfort about that, that we have all of the information so we can make corrections if we feel we need to. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Since Khan is still there, can I ask him to yes, look at item, item B on the emergency road for exit? What can you, do you, are you familiar with that? As she, uh, Ms. Tanimono expressed no access to their I am familiar area. with that. I know um, there is some, some discussion that needs to be um, had. Uh -huh. um, because I believe some of the um, uh, requests for the exit road goes through private land, um, from our land to through yes. private land. If I'm not mistaken, Auntie Jojo, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but No, that's correct. That's where it comes into play, where we have to get access from our private, from the uh, adjacent private owners to get through their land. So is, is there some kind of dialogue or something that we can we can take a look at that and That's, at least discuss where what can be possibly be, be made or done for that access? I mean, I think that's another discussion yeah, I that mean, we can talk about too. Yeah. All right. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you. Members, yes, but the county, may I ask a question or make a statement? The county public works, uh, Mr. Albino, is working with this project with the community. And so they have the water in Kohala Ranch and the road, there are different options to get yeah. into the water on that side. But since Hawaiian Homes has had no discussion with the community or the county, the public works director is sitting and waiting for you. So, um, it would help if we can have this communication. And I thank you commissioners for that very much. And for the Punana Leo, it's going to help figure out the wait list for the preschools in the whole district, because our district is having a problem accepting children into schools. So this would, might be, it has nothing to do with uh, the commission, but it's part of the problem that we have in our district and it could help. Thank you. <laughs> Mahalo nui, Auntie Jordan. Members, any further questions for Mr. Albino? Mahalo, Mahalo nui. Next, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Aloha kakahiaka, Uncle Pat, kahawaiola. Are you connected with us? I, aloha, my kako. Aloha, Uncle. Please I am, proceed. Uh, okay. Uh, aloha, uh, Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, I, I am truly disturbed. Uh, however, uh, the the being disturbed is a uh, is the nature of Hawaiians, I guess. I'm assuming because the first three commissioners I heard speak today was for clarification. <laughs> And, and clarifications from many different places. So we needed clarifications uh, in um, the old minutes being approved for publication and or, uh, and or draft form. So that's clarification I'd like to know myself. There was clarification whether or not uh, commissioners uh, who were not present then at those 
meetings back in 2016 where they be were they be liable for those kinds of things clarifications i'm asking clarifications clearly based on the uh, attendance of uh, you uh, uh chairman de uh, designate before the house um, state uh, biannual um, Ways and Means and the Joint uh, Hawaiian Affairs Committee, where uh, I, I was totally shocked that we had a, a, a competent staff, I thought, that could not answer this, could not answer the, the questions of, the, uh, of those uh, senators who are wishing to find answers. But I am I am truly here, basically to to speak to the fact that that just listening that there is still an opportunity for uh, Joby Mastakani to still be there correcting correcting minutes. Am am I, I, I are we really that far back? Twenty sixteen. And then we we don't have anybody. 2016 was the last year an annual report was written until Cedric Duarte got the job. So I I, I too have, have this uh, mutual admiration society for Mr. Duarte who was there. But to have to have even the name of Joby Masakatani come up now to say she's here correcting minutes. The minutes should have been resolved a long time ago. We, we shouldn't be here correcting minutes. So uh, uh, and the uh, and so I'd, I'd like to I, I really had to digress just listening to this this beginning 40 minutes of of the of this commission meeting. But I, I'm here to speak to the approval of the, the legislative proposals to extend uh, the, the lapse date of uh, Act 270, uh, 279. I think you do need time, uh, Chair, designate to have your staff come up with reasonable alternatives to 279. 279, a whole bunch of it is about rental. This is what's to have beneficiaries on the wait list acquire home ownership. And we're talking about rentals. We had a deputy who wanted to give $100,000 to get people off the wait list. And that was a fact. It wasn't. It wasn't something that they manufactured. He actually generated a, a bit of a survey for that because my three kids who are on the list for over thirty years got a survey. So, so why are why are we going to worry about what's in two seventy nine? Yes, we do have a deadline. Those funds came from the previous administration. The new administration needs time. And what I heard the senators uh, tell to the, our designate chair, he needs to get back before you, the body commissioners, and see what you are prepared to do. So the approval uh, uh, of the chair designate and his five point plan. So please uh, chair, do not tell me that the five point plan that you submitted is your plan. Because uh, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things I saw that could be could be uh, changed and and make it a better place for us as beneficiaries. We need to we need to update the uh, regarding Act Two Thirty Six, the extension of the lease to Prisco Hill Plaza. The DOE, this body, this commission with Chairman Isla, failed failed to inform us, beneficiaries, that these letters were written in May, given to the commission chairman in May. And in October, I raised that question, that I believe the increasing of the encumbrance on our lands were being done by having Hawaiian homelands included in the legislation of HB 499 that evolved uh, to, to Act 236. So those things need to be resolved. The beneficiary consultation policies, I don't know even what the hell that is, excuse my language, but beneficiary consultation policies, when was the beneficiaries going to be told about those policies? But yet, and still this body, it, it, it's in your, um, uh, uh, your agenda 
items to uh, to speak to, but I am truly uh, amazed that we are prepared to do to to look at minutes and motions that fail, have have someone correct the minutes. It's past. We got to eat what's there. We shouldn't be here just now cleaning up the record as uh, the attorney general say, oh, we're just doing it for publication purposes. Why? We should have been done every other meeting. The next meeting, you guys approve the agenda or the, or the minutes. So I am totally upset that these kinds of things, I think we need to clean up, not, uh, not the... Uh, clean up the past administration's mistakes. And there were many. So Mr. Anderson, I, I wish you luck in wherever you got to go to become confirmed, but you need to, and this commission needs to give him the authority to and all of you, because you, the commissioners have power. Only you have the power for land use, how are our lands being used? Counties got nothing to do with it, but you fail. This last commission has failed to, to make sure that the power of the commission is brought forward for the beneficiary's sake. So rental properties is out until you can show me in the act where it says you can rental. They've made administrative rules. I bring this up to my beneficiaries a lot. The Hawaiian Home Act is that thick. The Administration Act, the, the administrative rules, Title 10, is volumes, volumes. But the act is this small, is this small, four titles in. So I want all of us to understand that we have a fiduciary duty, or you do, you have a fiduciary duty to the beneficiaries moving forward. So please, that authority needs to be any of the land use, anything you guys wanna talk about, do it in a point where you're doing it as Hawaiians. Yes, the Mahalo county Nui is for necessary. Your Mahalo, Pat. We certainly Thank understand you. your frustration. Thank we you. certainly understand your frustration, Uncle Pat. And I, I don't disagree with anything uh, that you've shared. I, I, I also want to mahalo you, Uncle Pat, for the, uh, a few weeks back when I visited Paneva. You were so gracious to uh, attend the meeting and allow me some of your time to talk with you directly in person. But appreciate you bringing your, your concerns forth, Uncle Pat, and allowing this current commission under a different team to address many of these concerns that you bring forth on behalf of the beneficiaries that your association represents. Pledge to work with you, Uncle Pat, going forward. And only, yes, uh, Chair, please, uh, just, just on one point of personal privilege, only because as I watch the Ways and Means Committee and Hawaiian Affair admonish you to go back and get the commission to approve or disapprove of some of the things that were gonna be done. So I just want to be sure that they understood their great responsibility to you and the people and the beneficiaries. So again, thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to raise my blood pressure. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo nui, Uncle Pat, for your manao. Members, any? Questions or any comments on yeah. what Uncle Pat said? And Auntie Pat, uh, Commissioner Thank you. Turio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm, I'm going to say this really nicely because I am a very nice person. <laughs> so uh, some may not think, but I will say this. I do have concerns now, Mr. Chairman, that um, we have our, our past administrator looking over minutes that will come to us to be corrected. And I don't think that is um, um, proper that we have past staff looking at minutes that then will come to this body to be corrected. Um, they no longer work here. They, they don't have any consequences should anything arise. And so I, I, I think that moving forward, if you're looking forward to have 
months or years of minutes to be corrected, it should be as, as how um, the minutes are available and not be looked at by a past administrator. So I'd like that on record um, that um, if we're gonna move forward in co correcting past administration minutes that um, it stays just the way it is and be corrected the way it states, not have past administration look at paperwork unless you hired them special contract, I'm not sure, but um, it, it shouldn't be looked at that way. So thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Turio. Uh, members, were any of you aware of uh, prior commission chair reviewing these minutes for correction? Is anybody aware of that? If I could just see a show of hands, if anybody was aware. Chair, I, I think it's safe. We, we all were aware because we had uh, addressed this at prior meetings uh, in detail okay. because we were all frustrated that this um, kind of administrative task had never uh, been accomplished, just like Uncle Pat said. Is everybody I, okay with uh, prior commission chair reviewing these minutes after no longer being even with DHHL? I mean, can I just hear yes or no? Well, so so Commissioner Teruya is expressing her, she, she's not comfortable. I think for me, and I think, the, uh, well, I'll, I'll say for me, I think it was the only workable uh, way to go forward considering that none of us were here at the time. We needed somebody to, who we could, because uh, we, we don't correct the minutes when we approve them. Okay. We're delegating that to the former chair who was the chair at the, at the time to go through that verifying that it's accurate. Okay. But because none of us were there, we, we can't okay. serve them. So it was it was a bad situation, but it was the best we, we could come up with. Yeah. And if, if uh, is this something we can discuss now, uh, Attorney General? You no. know, so usually- in Oh, no, it's just something we can discuss right now. Excuse me, is there you know, in our decision- No, okay. You know, through your in our proceed. administrative rules, and it's supposed to, it's supposed to look, your minutes comes to the commission the following month, period. It's in your administrative rules. Doesn't come to you six years after. That's that. It's always been the process, month to month, your minutes. That's and that's it's in your rules. Yeah, Patty, and I think we all agree that's how it should have been done, but Unfortunately, it, it wasn't. So we can't we can't go back in time and I understand that. All my that. all my comment was is that a, a ex employee should not be the one to go through these past minutes. Then it comes to this commission. You're not an employee to the department. So why do you have why do you have um, these information to 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 change or to to correct to come to this body? You should just have, if the minutes is available, then you should just take it from there for us to correct it, and not be corrected by a past administrator. Something's wrong with and this. And commissioners, if, if I may, uh, this, uh, being that this seems to be a rather important concern that the commissioners have, being that these minutes go back years, I would like to ask if we could consider a special meeting in the future to discuss this. The broader issue discussing this, discussing a potential different way forward and whether or not we should look at an alternative means to resolving these issues if the commissioners have concern about a former chair who is no longer even employed yeah, with the agency. Chair, at these chair, I, I, Commissioner I think, Nevis. I, you know, I, I don't want to waste waste our beneficiaries' time on making on continuing this discussion. I think that that earlier we decided that that we would possibly put together a special meeting and set these items aside so we can get that that resolved. However, we get it resolved, but I don't think we should waste time in this meeting continuing this discussion and holding up our our beneficiaries to go ahead and make public comment. So, Commissioner Nevis, would you be comfortable with a special meeting set? at a later date for this specific issue? Yes, sir. Sure. Commissioner Awo, would you feel comfortable with that? I would, and I, I just wanna add, this has been um, an albatross around our neck for a long time. I'm just seeking resolution. I don't wanna keep spending endless amounts of time when we have so many more things we need to cover. 
And so I'm, I'm look, I support a meeting so that we can get clarity. What is our legal mandate in order to come up with the right solution? That's what I would like to do. Thank you. Commissioner Kaliki. I support a special meeting. Mahalo. Commissioner Aye. Kopo. I'm in favor. Commissioner Namuo. Commissioner Freitas. In favor. Yes. Commissioner Teruya. Oh yeah, I'm in favor. I don't want to waste any beneficiary's time, but I think that a special meeting will give us time to discuss these important matters as we move forward. So a special meeting would be okay. Sure, thank you. Commissioner Helm, special I'll, meeting. I'll agree. I will work with staff. We will set that. I uh, will also uh, work to ensure that uh, we also discuss and weigh potential alternatives to what's currently being utilized. Thank you very much. We will go ahead and do that. Uh, before we move forward to the next testifier, Kalamai, I should have done this at the outset of this morning's meeting, but just wanted to extend a welcome to our beneficiaries, all of our beneficiaries who are gathered here today, uh, here in Kapolei, as well as those beneficiaries who are online with our meeting. Really appreciate you folks being here for the opportunity to serve you all and also for your participation in the meetings. Thank you very much. Uh, Na Ko'olani Warrington, followed by Justine Kamela Mello. Aloha. 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 Leah, are you able to begin my, open my video, start my video? Uh, we need, oh, there we go. go. There there we go. go. Okay, my kai, my kai. Please proceed. I, okay, mahalo nui. Uh, before I begin, Leah, are you, are, do you hear me? Are you able to hear me, Leah? Yes. Okay, there's another testifier who is waiting uh, as well to present her public testimony at the start. She's Camela Mela. Do you see her? She's been asking to uh, get on the agenda to, not agenda, to be part of public testimony at the beginning. Last name, Camela Mela. Do you see that request in the chat? Yes, we have her listed. Perfect. Okay. Mahalo nui loa, Leah. Appreciate that. Okay. Aloha kako. Hawoli makahiki ho. My name is Nako Olani Warrington, a Hawaiian Homes Commission Act beneficiary, a kupuna farmer from Panaeva, Hawaii. And before I begin on agenda item F1, just for the record, I totally support everything Anakala Pat, Anake Jojo, Ame Aina Aloha, what they have presented before this commission. I totally kako'o all of their mana'o. And mahalo to chair and this commission for moving ahead with their concerns. So I am here today to support agenda item F1, approval to amend right of entry permit number 482, Keokaha Panaeva Community Alliance. I have lived in Panaeva for many years and so I'm here speaking as a member of my community. So agenda item F1, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, Agenda item F1 is a request from our Panaeva community for an approval to amend the right of entry permit number 482. And we are so grateful to the recommendation of the Department of Hawaiian Homeland staff to approve this amended right of entry permit. And we ask, I ask the commission to please vote favorably on this matter when it comes before you and as F1. The amended right of entry will support many of our ongoing vital projects in our community. And one of the exciting projects that I'd like to highlight at this time is a project that we're working in collaboration with, with NOAA, the um, wait, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. I'm holding up a press <clears throat> release from August and it features a pilot project that they're going to be partnering with us here in Panaeva. It's very exciting. You know, we don't often get really wonderful news. So this is a welcomed project. And so I wanted to ask 
if you would please take time, go online and research this yourself and you can read all about this wonderful pilot project. We're so excited with Noah. And I just want to highlight please some of the people in this uh, press release right here in the black. Okay, wait, I gotta go this way. This is our wonderful president of our Farmers Association, Miley Luuvai right here just has done so wonderful things for our community. Moving on down here in this black pants here is Maka'ala Rollins, another active community member. He is the grassroots advocate bringing us together with Noah. So please go ahead and take some time to review this. And please, when it comes before you as F1, please vote in favor of this, um, Let's see, technically it's called approval to amend right of entry permit 482 item F1. And commissioner um, Kalekini, aloha. Please, if you could, if they have any questions about our Pana Eva community, commissioner Kalekini is Mike Kailoa. He comes to our neighborhood watch meeting. So if you have questions, um, that you need answered, I'm sure he'd be able to testify as to how, um, uh, uh, how we band together as a community to support one another. So please, I just want to end with, um, on behalf of my Paneva community, asking that this commission approve the amended right of entry. Mahalo Nui Loa commissioners for your service. <coughs> Mahalo. Next testifier, Justine Camela Mella. Hello, my Kako. Aloha. Uh, good morning. Please my name, proceed. Just, my name is Justine Camela Mella. I'm a farmer, homesteader here in the Panaeva area, and a member of the Keokaha Panaeva Farmers Association, and also the Panaeva Hub site manager. Um, I'm here in support of agenda item F1, the amendment to right of entry permit number 482. The approval of the amendment is in alignment with the Keokaha Panaeva Farmers Association and the Keokaha Panaeva Community Alliances Master Plan, along with the Department of Wine Homelands 2016 Panaeva Regional Plan. Supporting this amendment is an opportunity for KPFA and KPCA to continue their engagement with our homestead community by creating spaces for fellowship as we continue to learn from each other and build community resilience through agriculture. Mahalo nui loa to the DHHL staff and all of our commissioners and also um, our homesteaders here in Pana Eva. Mahalo. Mahalo nui. Next testifier, Lihuanani Kumai Vaikaina Kaleo Momona. Aloha. Oh, Aloha, Auntie, you are on mute. Please unmute your device. Aloha. Aloha. We can hear you now. Good Aloha. morning. Before I start, may I give a uh, great honor and highest aloha respects to our Oahu great queen, Lilo Kalani, for today, 130 years. Thank you so much. Aloha meeting all of you. Thank you for giving me this time for 2023. Most of you know me already. I've been around. I want to thank you guys so much. <coughs> aloha. I want to thank you guys so much for all you guys have done in the past, now, and in the future. That's what I look for. I can see how, um, I wanted to share that I can see how some gonna be kind of like the, the na'au, yeah? Gonna be a little bit upset, because I agree, we should all be brand new, we should all move forward. Um, let's take this further. Uh, let's leave the past in the past, that's what I feel. And then you guys get a special meeting with those. But for us, like me, I've been on the Hawaiian home list for 30 solid years, since 1993, since the apology bill. You know, I, I'm not here to be cry baby. I'm not here for being a kapuna that you know hopeless and I'm nothing else to do. You guys got me where I needed to me, be. And I wanna say thank all of you. 
Eve with you now. Mr. Anderson, I look forward to meet you. Thank you for a wise decision you are making. Thank you that you from your Na'au is doing what best to clean up what was done. Let's not look at the flesh. Let's not be anger and bitter at what was done. Let's work together with Mr. Anderson and his great team and move forward. That's what I just wanted to say. I wanted to say it because, you know, I've been on the list for 30 years. I don't know I die tomorrow. But today, I get good grace to aloha all of you. And one day, one day, Mr. Anderson, one day you can put me on my land. So my grandbabies that has been waiting will be there for cherish what was promised to me and my family of the Momona. The, my name is Princess Lehua Nani. I am from the kingdom of Maui Nui. Please return me back home because that's what we all need to do. And I thank all of you for your good work. I also want to say to Maui, thank you so much. Mahalo ke akua. Maui no ko oi. You know, we're doing our best over there. I want to thank all those at Kahiki Nui trying so hard to get me back home. We are all waiting patiently for this wonderful, good team to move us forward. Thank you. Mahalo ke akua. And God bless all of you. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo. We have reached the end of our public. <clears throat> our final call to the audience on here, as well as to those on Zoom, if they'd like to testify. We've reached the end of our registered testifiers list. But is there anyone here with us in Kapolei or anyone with us online who has not already had an opportunity to speak, desire to do so? Aloha, Auntie, please come forward. Please state your name for the record and offer your remarks. Um, good morning, Aloha, Commissioners. Aloha. Uh, Mr. Chair, designate uh, for the record. My name is Blasan Pichara, and I'm a um, beneficiary of the trust. Uh, I'm actually on the wait list uh, for Maui. Um, just to give you a quick brief background of who I am, I have been a beneficiary of this trust uh, since 1986, been working with the department and commissions for the past 30 years. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you are confirmed, you will be my 11th chair. Okay. Um, and so uh, I came forward to testify on items C1 and C2. Uh, I think uh, C1 is very concerning is that there is a glitch in the law that may not allow the department to have all of the $600 million to be able to deploy the strategic plan that this commission approved last year. Uh, and so whatever we need to do to change that and remove that glitch, um, I think has to be a priority of the commission uh, in order for us to make sure we have the adequate funds to move forward. Um, regarding item C2, I, um, I have to tell you, uh, uh, Chair Anderson, that um, I'm a little bit, bit disappointed in your presentation at the WAM meeting, uh, where you call your five point plan your vision for the department. Um, if you took the time to take a look at the strategic plan developed by the department and approved by this commission in October of last year, you would have seen that all of your points are contained in that strategic plan, okay? every single one. Um, one of my main considerations and concerns in your vision is the desire to build, uh, utilizing some of that $600 million to do rental units and uh, low and uh, mid-rise um, apartments. If you look at our um, beneficiary study that was done in 2020, 76% of the beneficiaries on the wait list want a single family home. Okay? Only 16% are looking at rentals or apartments. And so I would ask that you change that and take a closer look at the strategic plan uh, to be able to address that issue. The other thing that I wanna say is that I also understand that rentals are sometimes a necessity, <clears throat> uh, but for beneficiaries of the trust, if the Act 279 was geared towards getting people off the list, having permanent rentals will not do that. They will still be on the list. And so, if you are geared up to take a look at doing more rentals, that we take a look at either a rent with option to own program, more embedded in the department. Um, and the other is that, that you develop a transitional plan to get them from rentals to home ownership. Um, 
as a former financial literacy counselor and a home buyer trainer, I can tell you that uh, for some of our people on, on the wait list, it takes a, a lot for them to get ready to be able to become a homeowner. And so if you are going to look at doing rentals, uh, please make sure that the rental contract requires some kind of financial literacy training or home buyer training uh, that can get them ready for that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to comment on is this idea of doing large uh, down payments in order to get people off the wait, wait list for a uh, fee simple property. I would say, uh, Mr. Chair, that instead of giving it to land that's not part of the trust, use that down payment money for the trust or homesteading. Okay. Uh, again, I refer back to the SMS study that was done in 2020. Uh, the average uh, amount of money that is saved by beneficiaries is 10 grand. Okay. In today's world, you need at least 25. Okay. If you want to buy off of Homestead, you're looking at 75 to $80,000. And uh, while that's a great down payment, if the family is unable to qualify for the balance of the mortgage loan, they're not going to buy that house. Hawaiian homelands and the beneficiaries that take those lots is the best investment for our beneficiaries. And so reconsider off homestead land and start investing back in uh, the homesteads. Uh, I think that's what I'm covering. Um, mahalo for the time and welcome to the department. <laughs> <laughs> mahalo Nui. <laughs> Members, any? Uh, sure. the comments. Uh, Commissioner Awo. <clears throat> Mahalo for your mana'o this morning, Blossom. Um, good mana'o and things for us to think about. I, I do have a question about the, you mentioned, I think at the top of your list was the glitch. And the glitch you are referring to is, is the correction we're, 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 you're seeking is that we come up with a solution that ensures we have the full three years to encumber the funds. That is correct. Okay. Because there's a distinction between encumbering and expending. So That is correct, yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Members, anything further? <clears throat> oh, Mahalo Nui. Thank you. Is there anyone else here with us this morning, in person in Kapolei, who would like to offer testimony? If not, final call, anyone online? If not, uh, members, we will move to our consent agenda. Oh, well, good morning. Please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Good morning, Chair, members of the commission. My name is Juan Garcia. I'm the Homestead Services Division Administrator for the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. And this morning, Homestead Services Division has 10 consent agenda items for your consideration this morning. Please provide the highlights. Um, th these are uh, basically consents commissions, um, item D2 to D11. Uh, again, these are the your regular um, action that requires your approval in order for us to proceed with um, transactions necessary for uh, applicant beneficiaries or lessee beneficiaries. <coughs> I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Members at this time, Chair will entertain a motion to put the consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions, commissioners? So just a, Commissioner Torrio, just a comment. Proceed. Thank you, Juan, for helping um, on D11, on Nanakuli, the Pooh family. Thank you for um, helping that Ohana and moving that forward on the um, transfer of uh, lease. Yes, that's that That includes, uh, in order for the transfer to take place, the lessee has requested for a subdivision of the lot. Thank you. I know they had a death in their family a couple of years back and they're waiting for the transfer to move forward. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Any further discussion members? No. <laughs> thank you very much.
we don't have anyone online wishing to offer testimony. Is there anyone here in Kapolei wishing to offer testimony on this item? If not, members, do we have unanimous consent to adopt? Aye. 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 Seeing, no, seeing no objections, the motion is adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners. Okay, members, we will move to the regular agenda. First item on the regular agenda is from the office of the chair. Oh, Aloha. Good morning. Please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Le Lehua Kinilao Kano, now has the government relations program manager. Aloha, commissioners. Aloha. Uh, the motion for your consideration today is that the Hawaiian Homes Commission approve the legislative proposal to extend the lapse date in Act 279 2022. So we are simply asking the commission based on some of the questioning from the senators, if we would like to extend, if we would support extending the current date of Act 279. After reading over the act members and going through what was submitted uh, to the legislature last month, our staff in the chair's office just feels that the responsible action would be to formally request uh, or to formally formally let the Senate know that we as a commission would support an extension should the Senate grant us one. So I'm here today asking if the commission would do that. I just remind the commission that I am due to return before the Senate Ways and Means Committee this Thursday afternoon at four and would like to report back to them that we would accept an extension if we were given one. Uh, Commissioner Turia, you have your hand up. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Lihua, can you help me with this? So my understanding is what we're, what we're gonna discuss is that we are asking an extension to what we already submitted in December, which was the strategic plan, um, Act 279. And so now we are, here today to come in again to get an extension, an extension for what? Okay, so maybe I'll try to step Thank back. You. So first of all, this commission in September approved legislative proposal 10-1023. Yes. And basically what that legislative proposal did was it didn't, it didn't offer an extension per se. So try to step back further. Act 279-2022 appropriated $600 million to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Although the act says we have until June 30, 2025, under the Constitution, the legislature can only appropriate monies three years past a biennium date. So the longest that the, the legislature can give us to, appropriate, to encumber those funds is June 30, 2024. So irregardless of what the act says in what's written in the law, we only have until June 30, 2024 under the constitution. So our first step as commissioners in September was, we wanted to go back in the, to the legislature and say, hey, can you at least honor what you said in the law and give us till June 30, 2025? Mm -hmm. So this commission approved legislative proposal 10. Um, unfortunately, I will say here at the table, even though that legislation went through AG review and BNF review, I only recently was notified that it doesn't accomplish the purpose that we were after. So we're still at the situation where by law, this, <coughs> despite what set, what's in the act, we only have until June 30, 2024 to encumber $600 million. That's our first challenge we're trying to overcome. This before you today is trying to address a second challenge. The second challenge we have is even dealing with the June 30, 2024 and what the legislature intended to give us June 30, 2025, we have another factor that's impacting appropriation and that is the maintenance of effort. So under um, funds that the state received through the American Rescue Plan Act, there needs to be a proportionate share of whatever is appropriated that a certain percentage is still met for funds for education purposes. 
So we have to monitor this, this delicate balance. And so some of the questions that we have is we're limited with the amount of funds that the department can spend, encumber and expend in the first year. So the question that the legislature is asking is knowing that you're limited with how many, how much you can expend and encumber, should we ask for an extension of time beyond even dealing with June 30, 2024, the June 30, 2025 that the legislature said that we could have, should we even go beyond that to see some, and right now the way this proposal is some unidentified time. Now, if this commission or body has a preference in terms of what that time frame is, then we can relay that back. Um, but that's really the item before this commission. So didn't in the beginning, we DHHL requested six years, but they only gave us what, th three years? So when the discussions were going on at the legislature, um, what was asked of the department was, what, what projects do you have shovel ready? And they were talking to us within a five to seven year timeline, knowing that our projects take time to do environmental review, design, plan, you folks know all of that, I don't have to explain it. So that was the kind of time frame that we were discussing when the legislation was being proposed. Obviously, um, given the surplus that was available to the state at the time, uh, the legislature decided to appropriate the 600 million, but there were certain caveats. And again, the time frame on the expenditure of those funds is the issue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So members, I'm not at all saying that we cannot or that we will not encumber the funds within the existing timeline. It's after consultation with the administration, it's believed that the responsible action to take would be to support an extension should the Senate be willing to grant us one. And it would help when I go back in front of the Senate on Thursday to be able to say that we as a commission discussed it and we as a, com as, as a commission would indeed support an extension should the Senate be willing to grant us one. Commissioner Alwolf. Yes, so um, there's still some confusion surrounding this deliberation because um, what I'm hearing is they, there are two issues now being mixed into what we're calling an extension. Now, the first issue goes to the intent of Act 279, which was to give us three years. So the, the, the initial discussion, as I recall it, is how do we get, because it was, it was explained to us, as I recall, there was a clerical error when, when it was stipulated that we pulled the trigger in FY 2021 is what I recall. And as a result of that clerical error, um, because of how the biennium works, we actually had only two years. So I was fixated on that fix, but now we have another problem. We have this American Rescue Plan Act. So what we have is federal funds that has been deposited into the state coffers. Is that correct? Correct. And as a result of that action, Somehow we, DHHL, is now responsible for limiting how much we can actually expend, which I don't clearly understand because that was for DOE and yet we are affected, right? So I guess for me, my bottom line is um, I'm reluctant to vote on an extension when the department's not even clear on, on, on the path forward. And, um, and when I look at the American Rescue Plan Act, really all I care about is what is our ceiling? What kind of restriction is actually being imposed upon the department 
so that we know what, what the limitations are for us in our spending capacity. Because when we're looking at our initial encumbrances, it may be that in the first year, we're spending below the ceiling that we are being um, held to. And I don't really know how to respond to the best path forward myself. So thank you. Chair. Um, Commissioner Nevis. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm equally confused because uh, in, in, your, uh, in your recommended action here, there's a lot of terminology that, that's sort of thrown in. We're talking about lapse. When you go back and look at 279, it talks about encumbering. It doesn't talk about expending. So I guess I'm a little confused. But but I think I understand that we have this other DOE action that is causing a problem. But it but when we well, when we look at your proposal, if it it says if the state fails to meet the ARPA ESSR MOE requirements, uh, then there could be some uh, issue with possibly having to pay funds back. But um, I guess what I'm concerned about is. It's not just us, it's also DOE. How much of the responsibility is ours? So what I'm saying is that instead of, there may be a way of not extending, but reducing the amount that we use either, you're saying expenditure and encumbrance, is that correct? During 2023 is gonna be the issue. Well, I'm, I'm not saying any of these things. No, I, no, I'm saying based on the, on the proposal. No. Based on the proposal on the extension, I'm just asking one, just one question. Yeah. If the legislature is willing to entertain an extension for Act 279 for DHHL purposes, would we support said extension, whatever it may be? So I That's guess, all. So I guess my, my concern, Chair, is what purposes? Because... I was a member of the CI of, of the uh, of the committee that put together the strategic plan. Uh, we weren't aware of this action. I guess it may have come up later. It may have been mentioned, but I think we we uh, thought it was going to affect how we set the plan up. So I'm a little confused on when this came into effect. The uh, the PIG spent a lot of time from. <laughs> Somewhere around May, I think we put the PIG together. Uh, and the PIG doesn't, it's not just three people to lock yourself in a room. All the departments were involved, chair was involved. Um, and, and we went through a plan that we thought based on the guidelines from the ledge that this is how we move forward. So I'm, I'm a little concerned on why we want to extend according to, uh, to um, the House Bill 2511, it is to encumber the funds up till 2025. And I understand that because of that, that clerical error, there's also the Constitution <laughs> says you have to do things within a three year period. And I'm sort of concerned as why uh, we couldn't get that corrected, like, or that, that first date. Because we got the first date corrected, that would put us into 25 and covering the funds. But now we have this other issue. I'd like to know what portion of that other issue is, is not allowing us to move forward with spending our funds. How much do we owe? How much do DOE owe? So it's not about owing or not. It's a proportionate share. So because the legislature appropriated more funds than they've ever, 600 million is not yeah. something yeah. we've ever had in one year. Yeah. The proportionate share that DOE was receiving is being impacted. And so the concern is we don't want to have to pay any of these funds back. And so what we're trying to do is to, to address that issue, to your point, is we're limiting the amount of funds we encumber, correct, as well okay. as expend. Okay. Um, but then the question, the, what's being begged as the next question is, if you're being limited into how much you can encumber and expend in your first year, that leaves more funds that you need to expend in future and encumber in future years. And is it fiscally responsible? Like, can you really do that with that time frame? 
and therefore to the chairman's question to this yeah. commission, should we go back to the legislature and say, given these issues, should we uh, allow, be allowed for additional time if the legislature is so inclined to give us that additional time? I see, I think that this, it, it sort of makes sense uh, as to what you're asking. Um, it has to be very, very clear to our beneficiaries that because of this issue, we need to do this extension moving forward. I'm not, a, I'm not sure if I'm totally sold on this yet, okay? I, I think, I think that, that there needs to be more clarity and discussion for all the commissioners uh, before we move forward on this, this item, Chair. Commissioner Kalipi. Yeah, um, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Lehua. Um, I too, there is that little bit of confusion on the, the ES ESSER portion. However, I mean, due to those reasons, all the more we should, especially if the Senate is offering to give us more time, we, we should agree and ask for more time. And in, the, in and during, as a follow-up, do like what other commissioners are stating, get more understanding yeah, about it. But most definitely the Senate is, is willing to uh, allow us to extend the time to take care of this. I, I'm fully supportive of that. And that's, that's all that uh, I'm asking the commission is if the Senate is willing to give us more time and if the House of Representatives is willing to give us more time. I'm, I'm not asking for a specific amount of time that would be up to them with, with their generosity. Would we accept it? That's all. Uh, Commissioner Cole. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I I agree with Commissioner Kalikini. I think it's it's the prudent thing to do. I think it's important that uh, the department get the message out to the beneficiaries that um, we're not seeking to extend the time in which we have to you know appropriate and, and encumber and spend these monies because that's that's what beneficiaries are going to come back at saying are you guys supposed to do it now and you guys are looking for extension because you guys whatever they would say you lazy or you incompetent or whatever beneficiaries say but this one is a necessity being placed upon us by legislating legislation outside our kind of control so the hard part is going to be explaining it because i've read this submittal plenty of times already and I, I'm having a hard time and it sounds every, everybody else is. So the, it, has, it has to be explained in a, as, as much as can, uh, I don't wanna say simple because it's not a simple issue, but a digestible way so that people can understand that, you know, the commission wants to, wants to encumber and spend as, as fast as we can. And we wanna get people off the list. Uh, but there's, you know, there's all these other factors that are coming into play. That's really outside our control. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner number one, and then I'll okay. move back to the site. Uh, Lehua, I want to thank you for the hard work you're doing. And I, of all the commissioners, understand because I was a legislative liaison for Governor Ben Cayetano. And the work that you are doing in this atmosphere at the legislature is unprecedented. And let me say that again, it's unprecedented because the legislative makeup is different, the political atmosphere is different, and what we're doing as a commission is different, and what our director is asking of us is wholly different too. Um, and I understand <clears throat> what you're asking because all he's asking and the governor is asking is to have us support him because the Senate is asking for this approval by us as commissioners so they can look at the overall economy of the state and our portion through the director to help them do that. And when we say yes, we're helping the beneficiary. 
because they cannot go forward if they don't know that we are also supportive of the state in general. So if we don't do that, then we're stuck too. We are not going to be able to move forward. So in that context, we need to look at it in that way. Um, it is very unprecedented. And that's all the director is asking is for us to support him. And, I, and I'm looking at it from a beneficiary standpoint because that's our job as commissioners to look at what's good for, for the beneficiaries at this point in time. So I'm in support. And thank you, Lehua. I know how much hard work it is to talk to all the different legislators and do the work we do. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. <laughs> so that's not a follow up. Oh, wait, let me take that out. <laughs> okay, Zach, so you. Over the lunch, right? <laughs> Commissioner Helm. Yeah, Chair, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about yeah. how does the staff feel that has worked on this since last uh, last year. You know, if you feel comfortable and, uh, you know, I'm not sure if they uh, would like to give their input, but, you know, we need to support them because they're the, they're the backbone of this pro uh, these, uh, uh, these proposals. You know, they're going to have to work extremely hard to get these uh, projects moving. So, you know, if, if, if they're behind it, I'm behind it as well. You know, I'm talking about L, LDD and all those people are involved in the, in the planning. So that's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Okay. I Members, any further Manawa on the I extension? Now yes. I so my question is, Mr. Chairman, when you go to the Senate, um, hearing and you ask for, you're going to take our your recommendation here at this meeting through this extension should we pass this extension today does that mean that we go back to the books and then we can we're going to revise some of these projects or funding within what was submitted on the extension itself uh, commissioner to right. no. it's okay so the extension is just giving this department more time instead of 2024 we have what 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 is the time? What are, what do we? That would be up to the legislature. Okay, so if they'll will, even entertain if, giving us more time, and I don't know, a that they will, and if they will, b <clears throat> how much time they'll give. So you had a feel with the Senate when you approached them. What was what was their concern when you, you the discussion was about an extension of all of that? When concern you, amongst some of the members was that there may not be sufficient time for the department and the commission to encumber the funds. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I did see when I was asked if I was there last week, Tuesday, asking for an extension, I said, no, I was not, because I wasn't asking for an extension last week. And I felt it would be irresponsible to ask for an extension at that point without talking to the commission. Right. So I said, and I was asked, why didn't you talk to the commission? Well, as all of us commissioners know, I can't talk to you commissioners outside of a <clears throat> agenda meeting because that would be a violation of the state sunshine law. So yeah. here we are having this discussion. I was also advised that perhaps this is something we wanted to talk about in executive session, which I'm open to doing, but with the discussion that we're having right now, I, I don't see the need at this point to not have this discussion here openly. And, and so as of now, when you, you when the dates came up like next year, 2024, that's right around the corner. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, are, are we ready? Are we ready within one or two years? That's that's a legitimate question to ask us. And, and that that's kind of it's it's kind of it puts us in fear. Well, it puts me in fear because, you know, the state is always good in lapsing funds. They, they love to do that. They, they, don't, they don't want you to meet sometimes that deadline so they can lapse that funds and then it, it just never, it's never there, you know, with grants or whatever funds. And so um, I, I think if we go in with an extension, it will, it will give us time and the staff time. I, I suppose the staff would want that extension. I mean, I didn't hear from staff, but that will help us to moving forward with the, the legislative proposals, so. 
And I, I, I just fully believe. Well, I'm just listening to what how everybody else feel, but thank you for that. Well, question. after listening to the state senate committees mm -hmm. last week, well, Commissioner Turuyo yeah. and fellow commissioners, I do fully believe that the state senate wants us to succeed. Mm -hmm. I didn't I get so. any other indication from them. And that being said, if they would entertain an extension, just feel it would be the responsible action on our part to say that we would accept it if they're willing to do it on our behalf and our beneficiaries. Behalf. And with that, I hope that they do want us to succeed Aye. and to see you succeed too. I mean, you know, so thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner. Sure. Commissioner Owell. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so I think there's a constitutional mandate that limits the expenditure of appropriations to three years. So that's fixed. So when we talk about an extension, we are really talking about capturing the full three years, I believe. Well, we don't know that yet, Commissioner Owell, because that would be up to the legislature. They could do that. They could give us an extension of one year. It would be up to them. So I, I won't try to guess as to what the legislature will do or will not do. The only question I would be prepared to, I will personally be prepared to answer is whether or not I would support an extension, whatever it may be, whatever they would give. I would leave the, how much of an extension to the legislature. Okay, so I'm just making reference to that constitutional mandate. Am I incorrect, Lehua? I mean, you are correct. I mean, it is the concern that we raised on the act to begin with, because that's why we only have till June 30, 2024. Because the biennium budget of that year was till June 30, 2021. So you only have three years. Even though the law was passed in 2022, you don't go from three years from 2022. You go from three years from 2021. So to your point, any appropriations made this year by the legislature under the constitutional mandate could go to June 30, 2026, because it's from June 30, 2023, three years. But to the chairman's point, he's leaving it to the, to the legislature as to how they want to deal with it. Okay, so I think the offer is well intended. Um, and as a result, I think that's something we should consider. My concern is if, if the offer for an extension gives us more time to execute on what's already been approved by the commission, then I think that's something we should consider. What I don't want it to become is um, the commission will have to go and revisit that what was already decided. So if the intention of the extension is they're saying to this department and the commission, we accept your findings, we understand that you may need more time to ex ex execute on what you've already approved, then I think that puts it in the right framework for, for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wolf Mahalo. <coughs> yeah. Yes, Commissioner Davis. So, uh, so Lee, who are, are, are we, we're talking about it, uh, reducing encumbrance and expenditures in what year? So this wouldn't reduce um, encumbrance or expenditures. What it does is it limits it. So what I mean by that is because there's this maintenance of effort, we can only encumber and the percentages have to be what it was for education in prior years. So as long as we establish that percentage, it's my understanding that we can encumber 172 million in fiscal year 23 and we can expend, and I'm sort of looking at Rodney, I believe it's um, 50 million, but he can confirm those numbers. So the question that is being asked is if we're limited to the amount we can encumber in this first year, that leaves a substantial portion to encumber in future years. And so therefore, again, is an, is an extension of time appropriate? So, so how does that affect uh, the strategic plan and what we've approved moving forward? So this action, as I see it, as Chairman has said, wouldn't affect the strategic plan. That's a separate decision if this commission so chooses. This is strictly dealing with the extension of time to implement Act 279. 
and I guess uh, you know for for uh, for Ryan, you know the the constitutional mandate for three years. How does it affect that? I'd hate that make a decision, and then this comes bouncing back in our face. I want to make sure that contracts in this language makes sense. Does it? Would it affect the Constitution? Basically, Article Seven, Eleven. I think. Well, one. Would you like to go into exact session to discuss the yeah, constitution? No, but yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Chair, can I ask that we, we move the exact session? I, to, why, uh, why, why, a, why can't we? That's a legal Well, because it's a legal, it's a legal matter. Yeah. Um, hold one, um, one moment. Let, uh, Mr. Deputy AG, are you recommending that we go into exact session to discuss this constitutional matter? Yes. Just yes or no will suffice. Yes. Yeah. Of uh, members, I will ask that we go into executive session on this matter based on the Deputy Attorney General's advice. Uh, there's got to be a vote. I understand. So the commission will convene an executive session pursuant to Section 92-5A4 Hawaii Revised Statutes to consult with its attorney on questions and issues pertaining to the commission's powers, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities. Uh, members, do we have unanimous consent? Aye. 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 Seeing no objection, the commission will move into executive session.
call the meeting back to order. Members, I'm at this time, I'll ask for an approval of extending the current date of Act 279 if the legislature is willing to allow us or grant us said extension. So moved. Second. Make it a second. It's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. Members, any objection? Seeing no objections. Pardon me. Any public testimony on, on this matter? Call my C1. The, we have someone over there. Yeah. Please come forward. Of course. I'm Homi Lenny Shadell, and I'm a, a resident and a beneficiary of um, the act. But on C1, what I would like to say as I heard the discussion going back and forth is that I had initially prepared a testimony for C1. But uh, having spoken to my son, who has worked at the legislature, ex explained something to me. Um, there are components of the 1110-23 that, as uh, Lehua mentioned, um, had changed. And so my concern is, is how this is done. And um, if... 1023 has already been submitted to the legislature, and now 1123 is coming before you. What is the process? Are you going to allow both bills to move forward? Um, and I say that as a beneficiary who has advocated for the department for a long time, because I want to know which of these bills I'm going to support and provide testimony to should the need arise. So that was the first question. And if you, 10 is already there and you approve 11, which is going to take priority, 10 or 11? Or is both, are you going to have both go through? The other question I had was, there's reference <laughs> to chair designate meeting with the Senate committee. Um, when I looked at the bill, it's like, okay, I get it. But is there some form of assurance, Chair Designate, from the committee members that they are contemplating an extension? That's my first question, because why go through this process if they, they're not even considering, like it's not on the table. So but if they're bringing it on the table, then I can see um, the need to uh, explore the options, as you said. Um, and so those are the comments that I have. And I know that uh, that um, it was confusing, Senator uh, Commissioner <laughs> Nevis. I'm promoting you, um, but uh, I was Pandemic. confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, too, I too was very confused trying to balance the equity and the value of either of these bills um, <clears throat> pointedly is how will it benefit our beneficiaries? Because we all know right. what the goal is here. Um, an extension, if they could give us a 10 year extension, that would be great, but we don't want that much. We need to get this work done and we need to get it done now. But can we do it in two years? That's asking a lot of department staff. And in the words of Senator Kadani, you think she's pissed off? I'm pissed off. Yeah, it would be right to me. I'm pissed off. We have waited 47 years for this kind of money. Has the <coughs> legislature been doing their job for the last 47 years? We wouldn't be here today. But they haven't. And yet, they place a restriction of two to three years on us? Uh -oh. 
So whatever it is that all of you combined have come to a conclusion to, um, I will sit back and see how it goes. Mahalo. Mahalo. We will work diligently to, um, oh no, you can, you can um, return if you'd like. Um, I can commit to us all working diligently to meet the existing timeline that we have to encumber the funds. And as I stated in front of the Senate last week, it's our every intent to be able to do that. But that being said, realize the time constraints upon the commission, the department, and our hardworking staff, if the legislature will give us an extension, first of all, only they know what type of extension they'll entertain. And if they'll grant us said extension, I just believe it would be the responsible action of this commission to accept it, to allow us for more time is all. But what type of extension the legislature will entertain, I honestly don't know. No specific timeline was given. And would have to be a lawful extension uh, because any timeline extension would have to come via a legislative bill. And I have, I have to believe the legislature would pass a, a legal and constitutionally sound measure. Is there anyone else here uh, with us in Kapolei that would like to testify on this matter? If not, is there anyone online who would like to testify on this matter? Aloha. Cora Schnackenberg. Aloha. Please Aloha, proceed. Chair. Welcome to your position, Chair. Um, my name is Cora Schnackenberg. I am from Molokai. I had the pleasure and honor of watching you on TV. And I'll be quite honest, um, I was pissed. <laughs> I was upset because um, I, being a waitlister and witness, and also from association of waitlisters. And I have four since 2019 who have passed mm -hmm. on and I have kupunas. And as we try to figure this thing out, um, I, uh, I hate to see time, time is very, uh, is at the essence here, very important chair. And I'm very concerned of uh, it might just push us even further back of the outcome and the productive, productive um, ways that we can get our projects done and addressed in such um, a reasonable time frame. But I just wanted to put it out there that I think the pro the concern is the time frame of of going back and forth of the time frame and missing the opportunity of moving our project forward, um, all projects statewide. Mahalo. Mahalo, Louis. Members, any questions for the testifier? Thank you very much for your mana'a. Okay. There being no further testimony, members, any discussion? Before I call for the question. Okay, members, may I get a, is there a motion to approve? We have had a second. Okay, so there's already been a motion. There's already been a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Any abstentions? The matter has been adopted. Thank you very much, members. <clears throat> so members, this takes us to the next item on the agenda, C2. Members, when I was in front of the State Senate Committee last week, I did present a, a vision plan that I had outlined for moving forth with the $600 million plan. I'd like to be clear though, members, this, this is not an effort to 
blow up or entirely scrap what this commission had already approved and sent to the legislature. This is merely my ask of you to add upon that proposal that you folks submitted. You folks had, had offered a little more than 2,700 lots, which is a huge endeavor and will deliver a lot to our homesteaders and our beneficiaries. If we are able to capitalize on Governor Green's desire to put Kanaka into actual homes, I believe the plan that I'm going to discuss can help us to build upon what you folks have already submitted and also re result in actual vertical construction in addition to just lots. Afterwards, we'll call for testimony. The first point, members, is that our administration will put out four requests for proposals or RFPs issued by the end of this first quarter across all four counties on Hawaii Island, Laiopua Village 4, Hema, 125 homes, not lots, but homes on this one. On Oahu, Kaupea, phase two, 60 homes. On Maui, Keokea, Faiohuli, phase 2A, 76 homes. And Kauai, Hanapepe, residential phase two, 82 homes for a total of 333 homes. And I'd like to commend our hardworking staff for agreeing that we could get these RFPs out by the end of the first quarter of this year, which is March of 2023. The second point is to restart our quarterly community <coughs> meetings to rebuild trust and address uncertainties of our beneficiaries. I've already started visits with our Homestead Association leaders, started on the neighbor islands. Why the neighbor islands? It's just been made apparent to me that Everything state government does is just far too Oahu-centric. So the first association to invite me out was in Panaeva, in Keaukaha. So I went out to go and talk story with folks. And rather than maha oe out into communities by community by community, I actually waited until I was invited. <clears throat> and those beneficiaries there shared their frustration that they don't feel we meet with them enough. They don't feel that they have enough direct interface with us as an entity. And I felt if we restarted our quarterly meetings before, based upon our 18 regional plans that are already in existence that bring a number of our community associations <clears throat> together at one time, we would be able to have these quarterly meetings and it would be a realistic goal in regaining the trust of our beneficiaries and also giving them direct access to us where it's most convenient for them in their home communities. Our third point, aligning assets and collaborating with fellow agencies. There's much for us to collaborate on with the Department of Agriculture, particularly in regards to water, the Department of Land and Natural <laughs> Resources in regards lands for homes as well as lands that may be available for commercial purposes. The Department of Education in regards to school impact fees and the Department of Transportation for streets, roads, and even bypass, bypass access routes. In my conversations in cabinet meetings with <clears throat> my fellow director, directors designate, I've received a commitment from them to work with us to collaborate with us. And this point would allow us to take them up on that offer. Our fourth point, pursuing multifamily and kupuna housing opportunities <clears throat> like that in Waimanalo, Kulana Kauhale Ona Kupuna, which is a rental opportunity in Waimanalo that has thrived now for more than 20 years for our kupuna. Also to support down payment assistance in the form of grants for those on the wait list to purchase a home on or off of the HHL trust lands. And the reason I say on or off is just so we have the opportunity to discuss both. I'm not saying we do one or the other. I'm not saying we do not. I'm just asking you commissioners if that's a discussion that we would like to continue to have 
and an option that we'd like to continue to weigh to serve our beneficiaries. And the fifth point is to actively look for land acquisition to provide single family, low mid-rise housing opportunities in addition to rental housing. Commissioners, we heard today from Aloha Aina Ioane, who said that the beneficiary's economic status should not affect their ability to be housed. I agree. I think we all agree to that point. But for far too long, it's also become apparent that no matter what the department and the commission does, some of our beneficiaries will be challenged to be able to come up with the monies necessary to pay for a mortgage, regardless of the price of the home. But that does not take away the department's and the trust's obligation. It is an obligation to house our beneficiaries. We owe them that. And I just believe we owe them every opportunity available for consideration. Now, some of them may not rent, want rental housing. Understand that. I'm not here to force anybody to do anything. I'm just asking you commissioners if that's something that we would entertain as providing them an option with. I think Jojo Tanimoto asked that we provide direction. I think restarting those community meetings would allow us to sit in front of our beneficiaries at least on a quarterly basis in their home communities and hear directly from us what our direction is and then likely, likewise hear back from them. Not only like this, and I know we go out to our beneficiaries or we go to neighbor islands six times a year, but this would allow us to do quarterly meetings, which I think we could commit to, as I understand has been done in the past. Uncle Pat Kahawaiola mentioned before a disconnect. Likewise, that I believe a restart of our community meetings could help to address. And I must emphasize again, that what I'm asking for your consideration on will in no way erase all of the hard work that you and staff have already done. I'm merely asking you, commissioners, if you would consider the five points that I just mentioned, being part of and being allowed for consideration within the confines of Act 279 expenditures so that we can offer additional opportunities for our beneficiaries. <clears throat> and, and in addition to locks, which is no vertical construction, in addition to that, offering actual homes. And I would like to commend Governor Green for sharing with me his desire recently he told me, Kaika, I desire to put Kanaka into actual homes. And I'd like to work with your commission in doing that. And it's, it's in that spirit that I come before you today, members, beneficiaries, asking for your consideration. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open for discussion. Commissioner Awo. Mahalo, Chair. Mahalo for that clarification. I, I think this submittal is, is done with good intentions and in the right spirit in terms of um, wanting to support our beneficiaries. What is unusual about this format is that when we look at proposals, um, this, this is not something that normally comes to us in this kind of format. So what we look at are proposals that are specific to an RFP or specific to a commercial lease, et cetera. And, and it's, it's a very comprehensive, typically a very comprehensive plan that's vetted and put together by our staff. So um, what we normally see is a product produced by the staff, and then um, it comes to us for information only. So we have an opportunity to look at all of the details that accompany the request. And in that, in that deliberation, the, the, because the staff understands that how we decide these matters can be very impactful to our beneficiaries. So they don't come to us with a request to approve it the day of the submittal. They, they do an information only, and then we have time to think about it. 
And then it comes back to us typically the following month with a request to approve. Now, now there have been times when we approve, there have been times when we don't or we defer. So that's part of the deliberation process. And so, so this one is a little bit different. So, so when I look at it over the weekend, I'm the kinds of questions I ask myself is, well, what RFPs are we going to approve in the first quarter? That, that rises to the top right away for me. Um, we also, you know, <clears throat> when we talk about collaborating with various state agencies, that's already occurring with the department. It's, it's kind of like a necessity because when you're doing developments, you're going to interact with DOT, DOE, et cetera, DLNR. For example, on Maui, we've been interacting with DLNR and a reforestation project for four years. So these things are just a natural progression of what typically occurs in order to achieve certain outcomes. And um, when I look at multifamily, kupuna housing, <laughs> et cetera, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I just can't tell, you know, what, what are the percentages we we're looking at um, so that we can align ourselves with what is contained in Act 279, which is 76% um, lots and home development versus rentals. So that's just the kind of things that are bubbling up for me. And, and so that, that's where I'm at. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you, Commissioner Awar, and for your consideration. And thank you so much. <clears throat> Chair Nevis. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for your mahalo. As a member of the, of the, the PIG, um, putting together the strategic plans, all of these items you speak of, um, starting with item one, and thank you for the clarity in item one. I was trying to think over the last couple of days, what are we talking about? What kind of RFPs? Uh, some of these things were already active in uh, in motion, so I I can I can understand what you're doing. Item one, uh, item two, uh, restarting quarterly meetings. Uh, yeah, I, I I think that's needed, but I think I think there, there's a lot of frustration um, on the beneficiary side, and I think you you saw that in the in the Ways and Means Committee from the senators about some of the frustration. When it gets to their level, there's a lot of frustration. Okay, <clears throat> just like when it gets to our level, there's a lot of frustration. So, uh, but I, th I think uh, I think that's that's a good start to get back to quarterly meetings. But um, I also uh, am concerned about the stress on the staff that we are short staff, and that takes time out of their day. Uh, if we're going to do them in person, uh, that pulls staff away. They have work to do. They have a commission meeting. They have to prepare for. Uh, so sort of concerned about that. I'd like to see an ongoing survey out uh, to all beneficiaries so they can continue input. So when you come to, actually, when you come to Kauai, I need you to meet with all the beneficiaries, not just the associations. There are some people that don't like dealing with the associations and they're not afraid to tell you how they feel about things on Kauai. Um, also, a number, a number three, aligning assets and collaborating with all the agencies. We already do that. Actually, on, on Kauai, we, we uh, because of my prior position with the airport, uh, we negotiated, or we actually, I met with uh, DOT, and for our Kuleana lands, uh, we met them uh, and, and asked that we could uh, pick up the grinding. Since we're a sister agency, we got the grindings for free to rebuild our roads in our Kuleana. That kind of par partnership is ongoing. Uh, it's, uh, it's not any violation of uh, procurement laws because we're a sister agency. So, so those things are going on and we still are doing more even with the county. Uh, we have, we have a, a, a road, Kalia Road that's going through our Kuleana that's, that's actually belongs to DLNR. When you go to DLNR, they say, well, we don't do roads. I said, okay, fine. So we went to the mayor and said, if there's an accident between Kalia Road and Anahola, the whole north side of the island, west side of the island is shut off. What are we gonna do about it? So he's working with the LNR. That collaboration is still going on to try to get that fixed to benefit our Kuleana, benefit the public, to make sure that we have those. So, so those those are still going on. We're still moving in that direction. Um, the uh, pursuing multifamily kapuna housing, and and I agree with what Commissioner Rose said. 
I'm not opposed to that. I'm just, I wanna make sure that uh, the marching orders we got on the strategic plan was to follow the beneficial consultation report. 73%, 76% of people said, we want a home. Uh, the rent to own uh, pro program is, is working out real well. I think we had quite a few people that are successful with that. Um, land acquisitions, I think once the, once we became uh, involved in the big, right away, LED is working on land acquisitions. I think we, just before uh, the last administration, I, I believe it may be on your desk to, to start negotiations on, on an area out here that, and I don't know the details, I think uh, Stuart may know, uh, about uh, an area that, that was supposed to be developed that we're supposed to be purchasing, I think, Stuart. And uh, so those are, those are ongoing and that's part of our strategic plan moving forward. So I just wanted to lay that out. And I agree with, with uh, Commissioner Woe that when these things come up, we need detail. Otherwise we waste a lot of time going, you know, what is this and how is it? So I, I appreciate your first effort and I'm sure we'll get more detail in the future. So thank you. Sir. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And it, what, it, it's my desire to have presented this to you earlier, uh, just with the time constraints that we're under. The, my immediate past predecessor was in office until December 31st of last year. I got the keys to this building two weeks ago today. Had a deadline 48 hours after that to turn in testimony to the state Senate. And then uh, seven days after that appeared in front of the state Senate and had some discussions with staff as to how to, how to look at what the commission had already submitted to the legislature and how to increase the number of units, real housing units that would be a part of that plan to this commission. This was the only way to do that. Uh, would be to, was to talk about it here in, in our first meeting. Yes. And I, I would have loved to have given us more time. I assure you going forward, uh, this is not gonna be the usual course of action, giving you something a week in advance and then asking you to consider. That, yes. That's certainly not my usual course of action. Uh, even in, in my uh, past position, always tried to give my colleagues as much advance notice as possible. We were also subject to the sunshine law as this body is. So a lot of that education did fall to our staff who did an adequate job. And we'll be able to work with our staff here as well to do the same going forward. But I do appreciate your consideration, thank you. Yes, yeah, so Chair, what, what I'm saying in summary is that, that most of these items are already in our plan. And I think we need to follow our, our plan. Well, one, one thing that we, that the PIG was set up to actually create the strategic plan and we completed that PIG on December 10th, once it was completed. I might suggest that we reinstitute a PIG moving forward to work closely with the department on all these details and keep us focused because we'll have regular, we have to have regular updates with, with the ledge as well. So we can work towards moving those, those things forward. So I suggest that we reinstitute that PIG. And I'm not at all implying that we're not doing these things, but I'm yeah. hearing that there's a lot more work to be done as I talk with beneficiaries who tell me we need to do more. And that's why I made it part of this okay. plan. For whatever reason, beneficiaries that have reached out to me just feel we're not doing enough. That's their, not, not mine. Right, I understand. That's all. And I'd like to throw my hat in the ring for the PIG if you should establish. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Clayton, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted, from my perspective, looking at the five points, um, what I see is that four of them are, is like reaffirming what's already in the plan that we've submitted. Um, from what I see that the reestablishing the, the quarterly meetings, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, it's always great to have community meetings. Um, but from what I can see and looking through the, uh, final plan that was submitted. And, and, and backing up, I wanna say thank you to Commissioner Navis and Commissioner Kawupu and, and Commissioner Omu for being part of that, that um, PIG. They did a lot of work on that. But I just wanted to say from what I see, 
yes, there's more details forthcoming, but from what I see, this really is um, inclusive of what is in the plan that was submitted. And, and what I recall always when we were discussing amongst the commission is that the plan has a lot of flexibility, the plan that we submitted. You know, so I, I thought that was a good, great point because you know, things can change, uh, other opportunities may arise, but my bottom line is I, I would support this. Thank you. So you're not always you would support moving that moving forward. Yeah, and I wanted to share that my you know what I thought is that it's inclusive of the plan that we submitted. Thank you very much, Commissioner Clayton. Appreciate you, Manal. Yes. Commissioner Kopu, any Manal from you at this time? Uh, no, I well I I add to what uh, Commissioner Neves said. I think the the current plan uh, makes room for all of these things that. Uh, or the or the or the items that you're suggesting uh, that would affect the plan. The, the current plan has um, space to accommodate a lot of these efforts. Maybe not in as in the quantities of spending that you might suggest, but um, but one question about uh, these quarterly community meetings. I agree, meetings are always good. Um, you mentioned restart, so I don't think I don't think there was any since I've been on the commission. So, a community meeting is an island, or is it uh, like East Hawaii, West Hawaii, like 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 how the commissioners are kind of organized, or how how does that? And when you say quarterly, is that like attending associations' quarterly meetings that they're holding and 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 the department's attending, or calling its its own meeting and having the the beneficiaries come to your meeting. I, yeah, just That's a fair point, Commissioner. What yeah. we, uh, what I would envision is that we would establish <clears throat> meetings based on the <throat> regional plan. There's 18 of them. And we would go out quarterly in our meetings with the regions. And each region encompasses a number of different associations and a different, uh, and a number of different organizations that would enable us to meet with a vast number of beneficiaries at one time. So it'd be meetings that we would call that we would allow for uh, our beneficiaries, allow us the opportunity to meet with our beneficiaries in their home communities and kind like of this in person. An open agenda and just, if you have questions or concerns, they, they present them to you. We would be able to sit forth an agenda. Uh, we could, and that, that's still, on the table for discussion. Okay. I imagine that we could put forth an agenda and we would also be able to put onto the agenda uh, an item for community concerns if the commission so desires where we could hear from, from folks. But it would increase communication from yep. the different regions. I agree. And, and to and, us. And in support, I just, I didn't know what the specifics were. And then just one question. So you're, you're, you're moving this plan uh, and I think part of the, some of the comments was are, are we actually approving like the RFPs you're, you're talking about no. yeah we're, we're not right we're just we're just buying in you're just sharing your vision basically for 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 this initial year if you will of, of running the department this is the vision that I'm sharing that I'm asking if the commission buy into is in accord with this is not saying that we're going to erase the plan that was already done. I have no intention of doing that. Okay. This is on top of and in addition to. So I have no intention of erasing the hard work that this commission and our staff has already done. Absolutely not. You're just looking for a vote of confidence in kind of this. To this, move this, this forward with before. additional options. Okay. Thank you. But no, we're not going to depart from or erase the hard work that this commission has already done and the permitted interaction group has already done. Far too much work has gone into that to erase it. And quite frankly, it would be disrespectful, downright disrespectful to those who put so much into it if we're just going to say we're going to start over because some of us weren't here when it was submitted to the legislature. We don't do that. I don't want any part of erasing your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Namuo, any Manal? Yes, um, I would like to thank you for sharing your um, five point plan with us. And as a member of the committee that actually worked on the 
$600 million plan. Um, and as I read your five point plan, I look forward to collaborating with everyone to see what parts and what components of the plan will be able to fit in within our $600 million plan and how many of the aspects of your plan will be working. Um, I think that there are parts of it that even um, commissioners have had questions about, like the down payment assistance and um, the part about um, purchasing, a land, um, pur purchasing a home off the land or on the land, which means you know, by using trust funds for a home off the the trust. So I, I think those are very interesting parts of your plan, and I look forward to working with everyone together. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Freitas. Well, being my first day on the job, <coughs> I didn't really <laughs> intend to come here and talk. <laughs> uh, you know, my I wanted to sit here and listen and learn. That was my main idea. Here. Sorry, I just shoved you into the pool. Now you got to <laughs> swim, brother. Hey, you might have to go on running, right? Come back pedal here. Well, you know, and I just got some of this literature because I, you know, I left a phone call over the weekend. So I've been trying to learn as much as I can, educate myself, you know, on uh, what's what's transpired. And first and foremost, the hard work that, that, that the PIG committee put, put together, as well as the staff, you know, here, here in this building, in the past administration, as well as working with legislatures, legislators. And, and most importantly, getting the Mana'o from the beneficiaries. You know, that kind of hard work is, is you know, I, I commend you guys for that. And thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for putting the hard work to get us to where we are today. Uh, now, this 600 million, you know, it's a step in the right direction. It's not a cure-all. It's not going to totally re rehabilitate our people, but it is a step. And I think we've tasked, we're tasked with this monumental, this monumental task to, to spend the money as efficiently as possible, you know, a lot of time frame. But in looking at, you know, what I have looked in, 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 the, in the plan so far and looking at these, you know, I can definitely, sorry, looking at your uh, five point um, plan or proposal, I think that's something that's, that's, that's worth looking into. But I do, I do, I, I believe in team, teamwork, team effort and getting a committee together like Commissioner Nevis is saying to, to put everyone's mind together as, as most important also with the beneficiaries, their manal, mm -hmm. you know, something to get to look forward to and move forward on. Thank you very much, Commissioner Freitas. Uh, Commissioner Teruya. Okay, thank you so much, um, Chairman. Um, and I commend you for submitting a vision um, in 2023. You, you're walking into this department with leadership. And so with this four point, five point plan, I commend you for, for um, presenting this today to the commission. Um, for the number one, the four requests for the RFP, um, I, don't, I don't know too much about that. I know you, you mentioned about four RFPs earlier when you presented that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lobby for RFPs for Miley, for my community, Miley Village, that that, that also can move forward quickly um, for homes out in the Wainai Coles. The other one um, is in Oahu or Eva, the Eva soon that we can hear updates on that property <coughs> in the Eva surplus <coughs> land that um, Woods purchased. And that is for Oahu. And number two, I understand you. This portion, didn't you hire someone to be a beneficiary liaison in your department? Yes. That goes out and talks to beneficiaries and goes to meetings and yes. sort like that? Yes. Okay. And so who is the, the liaison? Uh, the additional staff position that we hired to do liaison work with the homesteaders is Stacy Lynn Eli. And would it not be important that she could sit through the commission meeting or hear updates of, mm. of um, important discussion on different beneficiary I, areas? And going forward, she will do that. I assure okay. you. Thank you. And number three, you talk about working with state mm -hmm. departments, DOE, DLN, um, DLNR, and DOT. Yes. I think it's so important to work with Department of Transportation. And the only reason for that is that they put in recommendations on Hawaiian homelands without even Department of Hawaiian Homes knowing. In other words, they have recommendations to change street signs, signages in DHHL property. And the beneficiaries are always the last to find out. That was a complaint given and, to me in Panayama. Okay, and so 
that is a very important department to work with because when you go into the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and you change a, a street sign from I to E, you're changing the whole lives of beneficiaries. They have to go back and change everything in there. But the most crucial thing is that the beneficiaries don't know what's going on and they don't hear from the department what's going on. What is your position with the Department of Transportation when they come into Department of Hawaiian Homelands and disrupt the beneficiaries of these huge changes? So that is something that it, it is crucial to work with other state departments. You got to have that communication, what's going on, because it affects a lot of our beneficiaries. And I, I speak on behalf of the Wainai, Wainai area. Nobody talks to them. And there's a lot of changes that's going on from certain departments. Um, the, other, the other one is the Kupuna housing. I truly support Kupuna housing. Um, we only have one in Waimanalo. There's a long wait list to get Kupunas and our Kupunas are, are, are our Kuleana to take care. They're living long. They have small incomes. Yeah. And so they may not want um, you know, a, a whole single family home, but may wanna go into a Kupuna housing um, and live comfortably. So, right. you know, I was, we were pursuing that on our regional plan 2018 that was ad adopted by this commission in the Waianae Coast for, for Kupuna housing. And so hopefully we can get that kind of Kupuna housing opportunity for our Kupunas to live, play and enjoy their community. Right. The lastly is the, um, the rent to own, the, I mean, the rental housing. It's, you know, I, I support our wait list. And so mm -hmm. I understand when you have rentals, you don't remove them off your wait list, but I'd like to see rent to own that's, um, that's opportunity. That's on the table. Yeah. On the table. And so like we had the Kapale, the whole Lima Lima I, project, that was an excellent project. It was a 10 year project that beneficiaries could save and be able right. to rent and also be able to follow all these compliance rules, but also at the end, they will own their, their home. Right. Um, and that is truly a very good program for a lot of our beneficiaries too. Mm -hmm. But um, that's about it. And um, oh, let's talk about PIG. And I hope this administration as you as chairman, when we talk about PIG, permittal interaction um, groups, yes. that you will balance <laughs> out to spread PIGs to all the commissions, okay? Um, and I will put this on record. Since 2019, I was never asked to participate on a PIG from the last administration. I'm not going to go into why, but I want it on record that we all have an opportunity to participate in the Permitto Interaction Group and to be part of it. So with that, yeah. um, also to add in literacy budget, that's another component that should be also added in is to have that um, Financial literacy. financial literacy for our beneficiaries, help them, you know, and um, get them into their budget. And so that we don't, we don't have to have contested case hearings at their back of their mortgage yes. and they're getting a hard time. Is that how do we work with them? And maybe it's just not the LNY, we got to expand yes. our budget literacy for our beneficiaries and our kupunas to, to keep them um, comfortable in paying their mortgage. Um, so with that, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Tamiya for your manal. Commissioner Help. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Yeah, before I discuss about your five-point plan, I, I just like to extend my appreciation and mahalos to the uh, PIG that worked on this strategic plan mm -hmm. uh, the past year and a half, I believe. Um, and also the staff that was involved. I think uh, they really need to be uh, appreciated for the work they've done so far. But also, um, you know, my thoughts are to make sure this uh, Act 279, uh, we, we do not wait, have a lot of time. And, uh, you know, it, it, has to, it has to be, it has to be moving in the right direction. And uh, hopefully we'll stick to what we've already had that was already presented. Uh, now, now going to your, uh, Five point plan. I'm fine with number one because it's it's ready to go. I believe the uh, <clears throat> RFPs are there and ready to start. Uh, but then the uh, quarterly meetings for uh, for the commission or a commissioner. Uh, I kind of like to say because in this in the past we the neighbor islands such as Molokai 
like communities like Hana or Kauai, commission meets only once a year. Okay, so I, I'm glad you 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 thought about meeting more often. Hopefully that it won't uh, interfere in the work that the staff are doing because they're really really busy, especially with contested cases and so forth. So absolutely, we, we gotta we gotta watch that. But absolutely, for Molokai, for example. The community calls me. They personally call me. It says, "Oh, how come you know they're on the island, but they, you know, how come we haven't? How come we wasn't contacted?" So, I think, uh, uh, and, and they they would come to my house. They say, you know, begging for meetings that to meet with the chair, to meet with staff. I know the people. You know, so I think that's important, but especially those isolated islands because we only meet once a year. Molokai and Kauai. Maui has twice a year. Big Island, maybe two, three times a year. Oahu has the most, I believe. So, yeah, as long as it doesn't take any time away from existing staff, I think that would be a great idea. Um, regarding uh, <clears throat> Kapuna housing, I think that's great. Even for Molokai, that would be great. But also, I think because Oahu has the largest beneficiaries on the waiting list. And the problem with Oahu, there's less land for to put our people on. So I think this, this, uh, this is a very crucial time for the commission to work with, with uh, what, you know, what kind of strategic plan we're gonna uh, present for Oahu especially. But uh, I'm not so much in, uh, in support of rental. I think, you know, if it's gonna be rental to own, I got no problem, but I think our beneficiaries deserve more than that. They should own, you know, their homes. So, with that said, and then you know, as as far as everything else, I'm I'm I'm, I'm all good with that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, would also just like to share, members. You know, when I went in front of the state senate Ways and Means Committee and Hawaiian Affairs Committee. The committee members were adamant that the department and the commission be more proactive. I mean, that was the implication that I got, that we be more proactive. And you know, I really have to mahalo our existing staff and this existing commission for the RFPs that we're letting. That was your folks' work, not mine. The only thing I asked the staff to commit to, which they graciously did, was to agree to a timeline of end of first quarter of this year to move on those RFPs, to show the legislature that we are serious, that this administration is going to be serious about moving expeditiously on projects to deliver actual homes, vertical construction to our beneficiaries. But that was the work of the existing staff and this existing commission. I also understand, commissioners, your desire not to want to stretch our staff too thin. But I also have to point out, we are asking the state legislature to fund 59 vacancies, or to, we're letting the legislature know that we have 59 vacancies. We have an additional, I believe, 19 vacancies that are unfunded that we're seeking funding for. And so if we're going to ask for that level of funding, then we have to commit to the legislature <laughs> that we're going to be utilizing these positions and that the people who fill these positions are gonna do actual work and that there's actual work for them to do. If we're going to talk about expanding our, our existing services, then it's a comfortable position to be in front of the legislature to ask for those positions, for them not to cut any of those 59 vacancies, which there, there was mentioned last week of them doing just that by saying, look, we actually have additional work, an additional workload here to service our beneficiaries. Please don't take our vacancies because that is going to impact our ability to service our beneficiaries. And I fully respect the concern with asking folks to, as members, to vote on this in such a short time frame. It's just, these are the time constraints yeah. that were put upon us is all. Commissioner Helm. Since you brought up those vacancies, I just wanted to ask, uh, 
Do you have a proposal as to how we're going to fill these positions in a timely manner? Because this is one of the biggest problems we've been having. Yes. We can't yes. get things done because we're putting too much strain on the existing staff because they don't have backups. They don't have any. So I just wanted to ask you, Chair, do you, are you thinking about you know, getting these positions filled? Yes, we are. On a timely manner? Yes. So as of right now, we have at least 22 recruitments on the street, mm -hmm. meaning we're recruiting for 22 positions at least as of right now. My office was also contacted by the State Department of Human Resources asking to utilize this Prince Kuhi Oil campus for a job fair, willing to do that. We would also like to talk with our beneficiaries in our different associations and outside of our associations, our Hawaiian organizations that our beneficiaries are a part of and invite our beneficiaries to serve our trust and to serve their fellow beneficiaries. I gotta believe we have qualified beneficiaries for the positions that are available in this department <clears throat> and who better to service our beneficiaries and fellow beneficiaries. You folks know what you, what you go through. You folks understand the hardships that we face. So there's a so the Department of Human Resources has contacted us about a job fair. We've been contacted by other nonprofit organizations who are willing to have us go out into the community to talk to the Native Hawaiian organizations that they represent, and also bringing in potential employers to these job fairs, showing exactly what types of positions they have available that our beneficiaries would be able to fill. Yeah. So. so <laughs> so I did a bit, uh, and I was actually planning to put this on a future agenda because the, Real quick, I the phone calls ask, came in after I already posted Real quick, this. I wanted to ask you, you talk about vacancies like that. You have to also look at qualifications for yes, this vacancy. So what I'd like to see if you could produce something to the commission on what kind of vacancies available and are they SRs or are they exempts or, you know, yes. so we can understand these positions that sure. are going to be out to the public. Um, for um, consideration. And I think uh, it's kind of important to know, are they exempt hiring or are, are these civil service? Yes. And what description, what classification are you looking for? We that would that. be very helpful for the commission if it's possible. We can. And in addition to that, Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Turio, my, uh, our staff is also planning to update our website to show on our website exactly which positions are under recruitment. So in, our beneficiaries and others go onto our website to see if DHHL is hiring. They'll be able to see what the positions are and what we're hiring for. And my staff has already had those discussions uh, with staff who monitors the website. So those discussions are ongoing. Yeah, Chair, I just wanted to say because thank you very much. Um, we need to fill the Molokai District Supervisor position. It's been vacant for four years. so. To me, it's very critical that we get that position. And, I, uh, and like Pat's, Patty says, you know, got to get the right people in there. That's gotta right. Be qualified, you know. You know, I mean, that's the bottom line. Is that, you know, it's it's not an easy job. <laughs> and Commissioner Helm, while we're on the discussion of the supervisor for the Molokai office, are you aware of any potential qualified people who may be interested in that position? I can talk to you about it later. Okay. <laughs> I would just like to say, if you do, if you could please encourage them to apply, that position is under active recruitment. I'll talk to you about it. It's under active recruitment. Yes. Yeah. So it's a priority for this administration to fill that spot. We can discuss. With someone qualified. Let's do. Thank you. Chair. Sure. Commissioner Owell. So I think um, part of my process here is one of the concerns I have, I, and I know you're, you are well intended in crafting this language. One of the concerns I have as a commissioner is that by approving this, we are essentially agreeing to a predetermined outcome before a proposal comes before us. So for example, if we approve um, Kupuna housing, just in that blanket statement, we may get a proposal that comes before us that we may not approve because um, this is the concern I have 
about the general statements mm -hmm. because this body of commissioners, we're here to decide policy issues that do require a lot of information. Yes. So I don't want to commit myself to a predetermined outcome in spite of your good intentions. I, I, I know it's well intended, but we may be confronted with proposals that we either defer or disapprove. And that would go against the spirit of what you are asking us to, to do here today. So I just want to say that. And I sincerely appreciate your manao. Uh, <clears throat> I don't believe that this is committing us to any predetermined conclusion. It, this is merely saying we are in accord with the concept, not any particular proposal, that we are in accord with these concepts. If a particular proposal comes in front of us that we disagree with, then I would expect that individual commissioners would voice their disagreement with and vote accordingly. But it certainly doesn't mean that if we adopt, if we say we're in accord with, with this plan, that we are likewise in favor of any proposal, specific proposal that should be come before the commission. It's just saying that we support the concept. That's, that, that's all, just to be clear. So can we, by yes, Commissioner that, so can we say, can we add it into approved chairman, designate Ikaika Anderson's five point concept plan? Can we insert that? It's not inserted in here. I mean, um, if, if there is a, motion to make such an amendment at the appropriate time, we could entertain it, Commissioner Turuya. We could. Is that okay, Awo? I mean, to add that concept into that recommendation um, motion? Well, we, we didn't make a motion yet. No, but, but we should we, we could. add that in? The con it's a concept plan. And it is a concept, you're right. There Commissioner you go, Turuya. so why not add that in, insert that in into the first line item? Suggestion. Are you are you making a motion, Commissioner? Oh. Are you or is that just a suggestion? So when I we do make the motion, out there to the men out there, I understand. <laughs> out there, Molokai, yeah. you guys. Here? Commissioner, I won't. Look, I think um, I think that gets. This is the concept. Adding the word concept into the language gives me a, a little more comfort. So I think as a starting point mm -hmm. to to get us closer to where. I would like to be. I think that's a good start. I think so too. It's not necessarily, I, I, I'm not necessarily deciding the issue, but that helps me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, uh, Commissioner Turia, thank you very much for the proposed <coughs> compromise. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Nevis. Yes. So for a little more clarification, I would like to see, you know, three, I'd say, let's see, Four of these items are in the strategic plan. So this commission normally doesn't do vision approvals. And then basically this is a vision. This is your plan to try to move forward. But I'd like to see something that supports the strategic plan in this wording. I need some more clarification. We don't, we don't just approve a blanket statement. And I'd ask that this, this item uh, be for deferred to tomorrow's meeting for, uh, for us to vote on if you're going to do that. But, I, but and then I'm, I'm also asking that um, we go into executive session because I have some concerns uh, that I'd like to discuss with, um, <clears throat> with the, the deputy AG on a, a part of this plan. I think that's important before we commit to a vote. Okay. Is, First is of all, members, uh, do we want to vote today or tomorrow? I'm open to voting tomorrow. Wait, Coming first of all, is it a deferral one or is it going to executive session two or you want both? Well, we need to go to the exec executive session first. Then we'll talk about the deferral, but I, I need to talk to the AG about an item in this proposal. So it, it seems to me that without an executive session, Commissioner Nevis wouldn't feel comfortable voting on the matter. Is that right. what I'm hearing from you, yes. sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, are we able to at least take testimony from our 
beneficiaries sure. before we go into executive session. Yeah, I would just sure. hate to excuse them while we yeah. talk amongst ourselves and ask them to come back yet again. I, I don't want to do that to our beneficiaries. Okay. Okay. Can we just, um, how many, how many do we have who would like to testify on this matter here with us in couple A? See Thank one. You, Thank you. Okay, so I only see one who'd like to testify here personally in couple A. How many online do we have who would like to testify in front of us? <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to allow these two testifiers then before we move on, members, just out of respect for our beneficiaries. Okay. And Tehomish Nito, would you please come forward? <coughs> Aloha, Auntie, again, if you could please state your name for the record. We know who you are, but if you could do that for the record, please offer your remarks. Well, hello, hello. Chair Designate Anderson and members of the commission. I'm Homeland Lani <laughs> Shadell. And I'm a beneficiary and resident of Malo High Homestead here in Kapolei and a homestead leader in our Ahupua'a of Honouli. Um, before I begin, Commissioner Toria, I, I so appreciate the opportunity that you opened to provide space to acknowledge the work that Cedric did. Um, <coughs> as a beneficiary, you, we heard from the commissioner, but from a beneficiary, I would like you all to know how very much we, I appreciated the work that uh, Cedric did. And one of the most um, challenging projects that he had was updating the website. And he and his staff did a wonderful um, job. And, and so I was dismayed when I learned of his departure from the department. I was dismayed, I was disappointed um, because he worked really hard. And I, I know that commissioners come and go, but those of us who serve our associations and are here, like I have been for 21 years, we see the transition. And so Cedric was able to bring more information on the website um, than any of the other past ICO, ICROs that I know. So. I too want to acknowledge his service, not only to the commission and department, but also to um, our beneficiaries. So um, mahalo for the opportunity to address item C2, which actually took me by surprise and caused me to be perplexed. Um, surprised because in 21 years, and six chairs that I've been involved with the department or DHHL, I've never seen a direct submittal um, from a chair, let alone a chair designate, um, in the form of a one page submittal recommending a five point plan for approval by this commission. I appreciate that before we started that you did use a, a sheet to present the rest of the information and points on your plan. But I think what I was hearing from uh, Commissioner Awo and Commissioner Nevis is the importance and the one, how accustomed this commission is and has been and is the standard that I understand to providing all of the documentation. I absolutely understand your time restrictions. I, I got that. But even what you presented on your points as you opened this up would have been, in my opinion, something for us to um, move on. But what's more important to me as a beneficiary is that the documentation that is provided in the packet, in your packet, it provides not only the clarity of what is going of the motion and the recommendation, but it becomes a matter of record. So that like you were discussing at the start of this meeting about the minutes, I, if that one page was there 
then there's no documentation that can be referenced down the road. And so that's the problem I had. Perplexed because the first line, um, thank you for the opportunity to share our vision, does not reference who our vision is. So I, I didn't know who you were referring to, um, whether it was the commission, whether it was staff, whether it was another group, I don't know. But in the last line you did, um, the, you did say that these five points are my vision. And so it clarified to me that this is your vision. And so I would like to offer the following comments on your plan. So number one, um, I found this point to be broad. With, without specific projects, goals, or metrics. I heard what you said, but that's what happens when no information is provided. And so for me, my question was, were you, are you referring to Act 279? Are you referring to some other projects that you might be interested in moving forward? I don't know, because there's nothing there for me to wrap my hands around. Understand. And I had to lay that out verbally. Right. And you did verbally, but it, it had been, even in your point sheet, Understand. That would have been useful. <laughs> um, number two, uh, in the past 21 years that I've been involved, the HHL has never held quarterly meetings. So I'm a little confused about what quarterly meetings you're talking about. I understand, it's been brought to my attention that during the Lingual administration, there were some meetings. That's what I was referring to. There but we can get you. We can get you that information. Those meetings weren't DHHL meetings, so I just wanted to clarify that for you. And that's when the regional, those regional plans were first brought up, was during that same administration. Okay. So, however, DHHL has held Puvalu's in 2016 in Hilo and 2018 in uh, Maui, open to all. Homestead associations and homestead beneficiary organizations. Um, the intended 2020 Puvalu, however, was postponed because of COVID. Right. So, you know, these Puvalos were well planned and informative. They were interactive uh, with networking opportunities with other homestead um, associations, of which we still are friends. And I'm happy to see um, our Maui Ohana here. Um, with, and visits, visits to their projects or visits to where they, um, like the Kahiki Nui in Maui, I was so impressed. And so, so I would support DHHL restarting uh, Puvalu type meetings. And I don't know if you do these quarterly, that, that would be way too much for staff, but at least annually versus biannual. Um, there was reference earlier, and I'll bring it up again. Annual, annually, the commission holds 10 meetings, and Commissioner Helm, um, you mentioned one each on Kauai, Molokai, Maui, and Lanai, and then two on Hawaii Island and four on um, Oahu. But in addition to those 10 um, commissioners' meetings, and these are community meetings wherein beneficiaries have the opportunity to go and talk to the, the um, commissioners that are at the meeting. Yes. And at different meetings, the commissioners from that area make sure that they're at those meetings so that they have the opportunity to meet with their beneficiaries. Um, but in addition to that, DHHL held <coughs> 14 beneficiary consultations, 14, and community meetings. Um, Eight community meetings that included regional plans. Now, yes. one regional plan can take three or four meetings. Yes. I believe the Anahola meeting uh, regional plan took about five meetings. And seven open houses for the general plan. A total of 39 community meetings in 2022. And the number does not include lot selections or workshops and grant orientation. So my point here is that the staff 
already has been putting out 39 meetings and we're talking about the planning department staff. So are the meetings that are being suggested in addition to these 39 meetings or which of these types of meetings would you cut back on so that it could balance the work for the staff? Currently there's 63 homesteads on record. So it would have been helpful if your um, submittal had included what type, what would be the format, um, and then which meetings could be changed. Uh, however, I'm impressed that in 10 days you were able to um, have visits with other homestead associations. So I'm happy to extend to you to visit with our four homestead associations and Kapolei Community Development uh, Corporation leaders here in our Ahokua. I'm happy to accept. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just need to know when in this very tight schedule you'll be able to meet with us. We'll, we'll work with you. Mahalo. That's the job. On, we'll make the time. Thank you. Uh, on item point three, rather, um, you know, as with all government agencies, turnover of administration and staff requires a continuous cycle of con connection. So past and present commissioners, along with DHHL staff, <clears throat> understand and value relationships cultivated over time with federal, state, and county agencies, including those that you mentioned. The commission has approved the 2023 uh, legislative package, which includes 0223. To add a chair, the chair, and I believe the chair designate of Hawaiian Homes Commission um, to the Commission on the Water Resource Management. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if Lego is still in the room, this is the third round. This is the third round of trying to get that to happen. Um, unfortunately, SB 882. The same thing, but this one for the Board of Educult Agriculture did not move last year. And I'm not sure if the introducer will be bringing that bill forward. So we have two, um, where two departments, Department of Ag and Department, um, the Water Commission, to where the staff is actively trying to not just have that relationship, but to place the chair or the chair's designate on that seat and at the table. Um, I'm going to combine items four and five. So um, a look at DHHL's Act 279 plan, which a lot of reference have been made to, and the 2021 annual report, which both are on DHHL's website, thanks to Cedric and his staff, along with employment opportunities for the department, that is on the website. Um, so there's a lot of information that's being asked about that is actually on the website. Well, it does, if you look at the website today, employment opportunities, it will tell you there are none. That's what my staff found. So we're, we're in the, pro and I take responsibility for that, but we're in the process of putting that on there. Okay, I didn't look at that clear. part, but I will go and back and double check. That's, that's, that's on me, that's my fully But to fix that. typically, in employment opportunities are on DHHL's website. So, but a look at that. Um, it identifies, as you well have been told, multifamily, low, high rise, units, kupuna housing. And here's the thing I, please commissioners, if I walk away from this table and you don't remember anything else I say, please, please, please don't keep calling it rent to own, please. It is rent with option to purchase. And staff, if you're hearing me, make sure that any of the documentation referring to rent to own is stricken and corrected. 
because that is the problem that we had with Ho'olimalima. And as the president of the Molohai uh, homestead, I had to deal with a lot of beneficiaries who thought that after 15 years of paying rent, that house was gonna be theirs. Even though, even though they got the, uh, the orientation, they were told multiple times and they had the documentation. So when you use that term rent to own, it implies that when they're done over the 15 year period, they're gonna own that house. That is not so. So please don't use that term. It's rent with option to purchase. I don't wanna see it again. Um, okay, so the 2022 Kapolei Regional Plan actually completed in 2021 lists as one of its priority projects, Kupuna Living Community. And I remember that, as you said, um, Commissioner Tour, that so it was in your uh, regional plan. This, our uh, beneficiaries, this project is to, is designed for single or double occupancy and that these units could, could be affordable rental units similar to um, Kaulana Hale Maluhia O Na Kupuna in Waimanalo or the units that are planned in Mo'ili'ili, right? I think there's about 38 of those units. But ideally, the project would assist those beneficiaries who do not have the financial means or want to purchase a single family um, homestead because they've been on the wait list too long. They don't want a clean yard. During the December um, 2022 Eva Homestead Beneficiary Consultation, beneficiaries requested that a section of the project be designated for multi-unit kupuna housing. Um, following the beneficiary consultation on kupuna housing, administrative rules 10742 was adopted by the commission on August 17, 2019. I support a section designated specifically for kupuna to purchase in all future DHHL residential projects, that there be a section in any development that that section is designated for kupuna, designed and built for kupuna. Again, past and present commissions have approved land exchanges like the 55 acre EVA drum site for the 53 acres of the city's Verona village, which is right out here. Um, land acquisition, I believe one of you had mentioned, Commissioner Neves, of the nine acre parcel in uh, Kaupea from HHFDC. But that's included in Act 279 plan. But the challenge for this commission or the commissioners on land acquisition is how best to use the limited funding that we're provided by the legislature, right? Because the choice is develop infrastructure because you already have the land or buy the land and develop the infrastructure, both of which cost the second costing more money than the first. But a better source for lands are lands that are transferred. And I'm referring to, uh, but that they're suitable for homestead, like the 80 acres of the formal Pacific Tsunami Center in EVA. Um, from the federal government, and that would be under the Hawaiian Homelands Recovery Act. Yeah. So perhaps research of Section 5F of the Admissions Act could potentially provide another source of land transfer from the public land shelves. HHFDC has used it. Why can't we? Um, providing down payment assistance for those on the wait list to purchase a home off of trust lands has been introduced by staff, DHHL staff. There are many variables that must be researched and vetted to ensure that the trust is protected. Agreed. Before we move on, 
or move toward that option for our beneficiaries. And I'm here today with no other agenda than the kuleana given to me by my kupuna to protect the trust and advocate for our beneficiaries, especially those on the wait list. I share my mana'o today because the next three years are crucial. And my desire is for this commission and DHHL to be successful in expediting Act 279. Because in doing so, our beneficiaries will realize their lifelong dream. Commissioners, as volunteers, you may not always have the time, but it has been apparent to me that you always try to do your best for the betterment of our beneficiaries. This is a new year and a new administration. And we all anticipate challenges and changes. The work you and those who came before you merit and deserve to be recognized and respected. Chair Designee Anderson, I have no doubt of your aloha for our people and your willingness to serve. And I encourage you to work closely with key staff who have dedicated many years to, in service to our beneficiaries. And I mean no disrespect to you, but this is how I truly felt with what I was presented, with what I had in front of me. Rather than diving into the water from the cliff head first, perhaps you'll consider stepping into the water from the shore. With that, make a mahalo nui for your indulgence and your patience. Are there any questions? Mahalo nui to you. Chair, can I have one question, Anthony? Thank yes. you, mahalo. Your, your um, proposal about uh, kupuna housing mm -hmm. and allocating a, a portion of each development to kupuna housing. Mm -hmm. is, is that making um, improvements uh, available to kupuna, you know, to make it kupuna friendly yes, in the housing? Or, or is it meant to create a specific number of units that kupuna, irrespective of where they are on the wait list, they get, they get first choice for that? Uh -oh. Of oh, course, we don't want to disrupt that process. It's more making it. It's more friendly. that um, in this region, right? We're looking at Verona parcels, and now there's a potential for the Eva parcels. But what we're what the beneficiaries were envisioning is that part of each development, part of each residential unit, that there be a separate section for Kupuna, probably multifamily fourplex that they have fencing in a small yard that maybe they can make a small garden and then they have maybe a small pet or something, but they, they can't afford a house. But in awarding those um, homestead leases, mm -hmm. um, the department would still follow the- Yes, the absolutely. Order. Okay, yeah. got it. And Thank then you. a separate type of kapuna housing would be like the one in White Manalo that, uh, Uncle Tony and Auntie Ulu was part of, yeah. And we had a former commissioner as well who was a resident right. there for a number of years yeah. before he passed. Oh, yes, Uncle. Uncle. Thank you. Members, any further questions? Commissioner Awo. Uh, Auntie Omi, I wanted to mahalo you, <coughs> as always, for your very thoughtful testimony uh -huh. uh, that, that brings to this commission and others a long history of knowledge, experience, and, and um, mana'o glean from that kind of history and experience is really important for us to, we, we really do have to acknowledge our past in order to move toward the future. 
And um, I, I do think uh, to your point that recognizing those who have come before us, it does help to inform how we should arrive at that destination that we are all seeking. And um, I will say that entering the water from the shoreline is very, very important. And that applies to the commission as well. When we look at these kinds of proposals, if it's not fully developed and it doesn't inform us the way it should for me, that raises a concern. And I don't um, believe it was done with ill intent. No, I don't. But this That's is great. the process of beginning the journey. Mm -hmm. And so we have Kuliana to inform mm -hmm. as people begin this journey, how we should take that first step forward. So that's Absolutely. why I'm at this morning, I mean, today on this proposal. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, Thank you for your clarification on uh, rent to own. Oh, please. <laughs> Appreciate that very much, Mahalo. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? Yes, Yeti. Thank you for your, for your testimony. Very eloquent. My phone's going off the hook over here. My wife's watching the, the YouTube. So uh, thank you very much. It's very important that we hear from, from our community, from our Kipunas, those that are, uh, are, are, are involved in the same mission that we are. So, mm -hmm. mahalo. Thank you. Um, I, I, I know you set a schedule, um, Chair Designate, and, and I'm, I know I'm going out of line, but I'm going to take that risk. But as you eat your lunch, would you consider moving forward with F2 so that these young um, Haumana who um, did the march this morning and uh, so that they can go, may I, if you would please, Mahalo. Chair. Sure. Commissioner Nevis. I'd like to defer uh, the uh, executive session so we can handle uh, this what Auntie was mentioning on yes we uh, can F1 and F2 we can so we can get these folks on their way we can get our kids back to school with the commission's indulgence uh, we can um let me just have the final testifier on this item if I may since we're already on it aloha uh, mahalo Tikora, for are you on I I am um, I'm okay. trying to on video but um, can you hear me. We can hear you. Okay. Please proceed. Well, I, I can't get a video, um, my video to work, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, I want to just mahalo auntie um, for her presentation. I just want to highlight, and I know you guys are swimming for time. So I wanted to highlight mahalo chair. Again, my name is Cora Schnackenberg from the <clears throat> company. My whole purpose of being involved and into engaging in this meeting is for the purpose of, again, putting our people that are on the wait list on their land. And with that being said, I wanted to highlight RFPs that we have our own beneficiaries. There are, we have our own professionals that would be qualified and if they would be given the opportunity, the same opportunity to also be selected in any type of um, contract job that is available. That was number one. Number two was being looking at the land acquisition uh, and the, the <clears throat> land exchange that was mentioned earlier by our chair Anderson. I wanted to share that, you know, the land exchange that we need someone to screen these land so that it is suitable for homesteading. Um, you will be um, entertaining, <laughs> will be entertained by tomorrow the J agenda regarding Uwalapu'e and Molo, uh, for Molokai, which your um, staff, planning office staff, has been working with G70, which they have done a great um, job in their expertise and um, and in their findings. So I, I just wanted to put that out that someone should be screening this chain, this these land exchange. 
Um, number three is your regional plan that you mentioned earlier that you want to revisit those regional plan. I couldn't agree with you anymore because <coughs> and you mentioned mm -hmm. about um, uh, the Puvalu. Well, the Puvalu was a starting point for these regional plans. And these regional plans sometimes gets put on the sideway and is not being addressed and completed as supposed to uh, with these projects uh, and these regional plans and, and also the funds that is necessary to complete these projects. Um, the other thing I wanted to share was um, you mentioned about your staff being involved and in working with with other entities such as um, transportation. Um, I would continue, there is continued collaboration that your, off, your staff um, has been working with um, Jonathan Schwar, that's um, that represent the department with Seaworm. He is doing a fabulous job and I just wanna uh, commend his efforts and also your staff that he continue to be involved, especially with the Maui County Water Works Supply. That is very important that he continue to be involved in that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is that the, benefit, the beneficiary um, liaison that you have put in place, we could definitely benefit and if she could be actively involved with our Hawaiian Homes Homestead uh, association, that'd be great. We are very active on Moloka'i and I would welcome her present in, in our future meetings. Uh, let me see now. And as far as the rental option to purchase, <laughs> I love that wording. I would agree and support. I also um, support the Kupuna housing. I'm, I'm not sure if it would work on Moloka'i. I would hope it would. Um, but our kupunas who also been on the wait list would like the opportunity to be in a regular home. Um, and also, if you could look at the fee simple option, a lot of our people are already renting and they are in homes. And if they are interested in purchasing their existing home in lieu of maybe getting off the list, that would be something that the department should consider as another option to our beneficiaries. And with all that being said, I mahalo for all your hard work and I continue to um, foresee our commissioners to support our beneficiaries, especially those are on the wait list. Mahalo. Mahalo nui for your mana'o. Blossom Feitera, followed by Sybil Lopez. Um, hi, Aloha, can you hear me? Okay, Aloha, um, Aloha. Mr. Carr, doesn't it, can uh, everybody hear me? Yes, we can, we can hear you and we can see you, Aloha. Okay. <laughs> It's a good thing, yeah? Um, so, uh, you know, first of all, mahalo for the opportunity to testify this morning on the same item. <clears throat> uh, and I was intending to also so be part of the conversation uh, as it comes before the commission for a vote. So again, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned about the way the conversation has been going with the commission in terms of the desire to implement your vision, uh, that it is conceptual in nature. Uh, those two key words tell me that there's nothing uh, on paper and it's subject to, uh, to more conversations going forward. Uh, but I got to tell you, and I want to also remind the commissioner about this conversation back last year, that we had the same type of conversation with staff at a commission meeting, and I think it was in August or September. Uh, and the staff had provided the commission with, uh, um, with the premise that it's a strategic plan with some flexibility in it in case the department uh, or the commission needs to be able, needs to have the freedom to pivot the plan so that it, it can become more efficient and more uh, doable. And so, you know, 
as you know from this morning's testimony, I, I, I do have some concerns about this five point plan and this vision that the chair is bringing to this table. And so, uh, and I know that you guys are gonna go into executive session to talk a little bit more about this. I'm going to just ask you point uh, flat out commission to please stay the course. You've already adopted a plan and it is a good plan, okay? Uh, and it, I say it's a good plan because the department consulted with you. They consulted with the beneficiaries in the communities. They consulted with homestead associations. So this is not something that came out of uh, the dark, okay? Uh, and so with the $600 million on the line and a glitch in the current um, bill, I would ask the commission to continue supporting your strategic plan that you already adopted. Uh, by all means, please continue to have a conversation with the chair and his vision. Uh, like I said, most of what he has in his vision is already part of the strategic plan. I see no reason why the plan that his vision should be adopted by the, by the commission. You already have a plan in place. Uh, so with that, um, I need to get back to my other meeting. And so mahalo once again, Mr. Chair and the commission for the opportunity to testify. Mahalo for your manao. Sybil Lopez. Aloha chair and commissioners. I, I don't know if you can see me, I'm calling in from Molokai. So just like Cora, we've <laughs> um, technical difficulties all the way coming from the island of Molokai. So I'll try to put on my, my um, video, but if I get caught off, my apologies. Aloha, um, we can hear you just fine though. Okay, so aloha mai kako, um, mahalo oh. nui, um, the new chair designee, um, mahalo for the commission. Um, just to let you know, just to give you a brief history, uh, you are my sixth director. I have been in, um, in this Homestead Beneficiary Association since 2006 um, with um, past chair Micah Kane. So from Micah Kane all the way down to you, you, you will be a my sixth di director. And um, with that being said, uh, I, I can we tell her that? Sybil, you're muted. Aloha, Sibyl, you muted yourself. If Command is correct, our there commissioners you go. Now we can hear you. Um, for, um, for stating everything, what he said is true. And being that we're not, you are not an Oahu centric department, you're a Kohawai Pai Aina across the whole state of Hawaii. And having that type of um, leadership. Please consider all islands um, as um, I am supporting uh, on my own behalf, your um, agenda item C2 and your five point plan that you have um, presented to the commission. And the reason and the, the first and foremost reason why I support your plan is because to me, it's a bold move for a, a new chair designee um, to, to actually have a five point plan even before being um, appointed and, um, you know, officially in that capacity. So I, I really support your boldness in coming out that strong. And I mahalo you for that. Like I said, having five directors before you, um, th that's what I support your boldness. And I see in your plan that, that I oh. Always. Oh, Sybil, you're muted again. Hey, Russell. I can see you on the screen. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to see if I can pick up. Oh, yeah. I also want to. Um, 
actually speak to what the testifier said before, um, Auntie Homelani Shadow, mahalo her because that's how I've met her through all of these Puvalus and what um, DHHL has provided to us as Homestead Beneficiary Association. But I kind of want to make clear that um, there's a real difference between community meetings, which are beneficiary associations and beneficiary consultation per Hawaii Revised Statutes Chapter 91. And I want to make it absolutely clear because one of the proposals that DHHL is proposing to the ledge is to do away with Chapter 91, our, our due process rights, um, because they say it's, you guys already have beneficiary consultation. But because we come from a neighboring island, your beneficiary consultation process has successfully been failing our island and our mokupuni in many counts, many counts of um, trying to reach out to our, our community. If what Auntie Homelani is trying to connect is, is the richness and the pureness on how beneficiary consultation should be in the interaction and involvement and engagement within our Homestead Beneficiary Association. And that is why Prince Kuhio provided that into the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act is to provide us with the self-determination and self-governance that we need. And it's for you chair and commission to, to align yourselves with what Prince Kuhio's legacy was all about. And, um, and I guess that's all I have to share and I don't wanna take any more of your time. So I would like to invite you personally to our Moloka'i Mokupuni and I would want you to share your staff and administration to us so we can provide that trust and loyalty with you because not only that you, you're a public servant for us, it goes both ways as, as we wanna provide that relationship to you. So mahalo chair. Mahalo Nui Sibu and thank you also for the invitation. Accepted, we will work with you to set something up, but look forward to being able to come and see you in Follow person. Me. Okay, members, coming to the end of our testimony for this particular item on the agenda C2. <laughs> Commissioner had extended a request to move to another area of the agenda. I would entertain a motion at this point to do that. Second. Is there a second? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Clarification, what area? F1 or F2? I believe it's F1 and F2. And F2, yes. Two of them? Yes. It's my understanding. I thought we were just going to discuss one so they could leave and then... I believe, they, I believe they're coming forward regarding both. The F2 two? charter. Okay. They're F2. Okay. F2. Okay. So, uh, Commissioner okay. Taria, thank you very much for the clarification. Thank you. Then the motion is pertaining to F F2, moving Correct. to taking yep. the agenda out of order, moving to F2. Yes. So that we can allow yes. the testifiers right. to come forward and then get on with their business. Thank you. Okay, Thank we will do that. Far. Members, please move to section F2 of the agenda. <clears throat> Aloha, if you could state your name for the record and then proceed. Aloha, happy new year, commissioners. Again, Kahana Albino, acting administrator, land management division. Um, uh, this is for item number F2. Um, with us today, I have Jade Danner, with uh, principal for Kanu. No, uh, the operations director for Kanu. Okay, and we have our principal and our board chair on uh, the Zoom call. Okay, okay. and, and uh, Mr. Albino, if you could uh, state the names of the people at the table with you, just yes. for the record. So Jade Danner. Yes. And my staff person, uh, Typo Duncan. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so the recommended motion and action that LMD is seeking um, that the Hawaiian Homes Commission approves the issuance of a license agreement to Kanu Ikapono Public Charter School for 30 years or until such time as Kanu Ikapono Charter School ceases to operate a charter school, whichever occurs sooner, for the privilege, for the right and privilege to enter and use a portion of land in Anahola, Island of Kauai, Hawaii, identified as tax map key number 448003. Number 19, um, as, delineated in, as delineated in in Exhibit A, consisting of approximately 10.5 acres uh, of land for the purpose of operating, maintaining a public charter school subject to the following conditions as listed in their submittal. Thank you. Members, any question or points to be no raised to the chair. staff, Commissioner Nevis? Thank you, Chair. First of all, thank you um, for all, for. Um, Ms. Danner and your staff and kids, hope you're learning something. 
We expect you to be on this commission in the future. Um, I'd like to say that, you know, this, this school really uh, is the heart of on all of um, I, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to spend much time at school because of my busy schedule. And, uh, but I appreciate what, what uh, the studies have come out of the school, uh, the engagement with the community, uh, the trades program, which is helping uh, all of our folks in the community to uh, provide uh, services and provide skills for our students. So uh, I'm fully in support of, of this, uh, this action and we wish you well in the future. And I am serious about you guys being on this commission because I won't be around by the time you get here, but we wish you the best model. Model Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Nevis. Members, any questions for staff? Thank you. Commissioner Teruya. Thank you. Thank you, Kahana. Yep. Is this license a um, designated community use? This 10.5 acres it for is, the school. I believe it is, um, as it's noted in the... Um, uh, and is the rent $1,560? Correct. Is Annually. Quite, Annually. Annually? Yes. Is this a consistent number that we use yeah. for other charter schools or? Um, we've carried over this number because uh, the previous license that was there, um, as you look through the background information, mm -hmm. um, was not a certified public charter school, as I understand it. Um, so now that um, Jade guys have come in and has um, met the requirements to be a Hawaii State public charter school, right. um, they've committed to taking over and having this new license issued to them. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jade. Yeah, no, that, that's correct. The license uh, was issued to a nonprofit that was a partner of um, we did that originally to the school, then to the nonprofit in order to help us get facilities. We have now secured those facilities and the school is ready to uh, be responsible for the license again directly. Um, you know, and, and again, we have our executive director, Kanoi Ohuna, and our board chair, Shane uh, Cobb Adams on the Zoom call. Um, but that's really the, the primary thing is that because of some uh, the way Kamehameha schools wanted to grant facilities when they um, they had done some renovations on their campus and then no. gave charter schools these portables that we could have. One of the conditions was that it go through a nonprofit at the time. Uh, that is now resolved and the campus is set and we're uh, in a position to, to manage that directly. And we just think it's a um, cleaner way to go uh, that empowers the school. Um, to be in control of what happens. That's really the, the bottom line. And so that's why we're seeking the um, license directly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Nabo. Happy. Aloha. I am very I'm happy to see that you're doing this. And I'm also very proud of the fact that Commissioner Nevis is so supportive of you. I wish you all the success. We need more public charter schools. And I, I, I am very happy to support you. Thank you. Uh, and I just, to Commissioner Nevis's point about our students, this is a cadre of students that are particularly interested in government and politics. And so we're taking them to <laughs> opening day at the ledge tomorrow. They have a meeting with uh, Senate President Kochi on Thursday. We're hoping to get a meeting with Representative uh, Nakamura, both which represent Anahola. And so, uh, these kids are young and engaged, and we intend to have them uh, learn and come to your meetings and understand how the process works. That's our goal. Uh, Mr. Kaleki. Thank you, Chair. Uh, question for you, Carla. So now that this uh, situation about being a public charter school meets the satisfaction, so that license number 512 is a moot issue? Will will be uh, uh, terminated, and a new license number will be issued. Okay, yeah. Thank you, members. Any further questions for staff? If not, Mahalo Nui. Mahalo. Yes. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Is there anyone here with us who would like to testify on this matter? Is there anyone here who would like to, in here in Kapolei who would like to testify on this matter? If not, do we have anyone remotely who would like to testify on this matter? If not, I'd like to introduce motion. A motion to support. It's been I moved by Commissioner Turia. Do I hear a second? Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you folks very much for being here. Okay, members, going back to our, our earlier discussion on item C2, there was a request from Commissioner Nevis to move into executive session to discuss legalities and potential constitutional issues. The commission will convene an executive session pursuant to section 92-5A4 of a revised statutes to consult with its attorney on questions and issues pertaining to the commission's powers, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities. Moved by Commissioner Taria. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you very much. We'll move into executive session. <laughs>
Um, item G2 for information only, um, the presentation of the department's beneficiary consultation policy. Okay. I just have a short slide deck to help us get through this presentation. Um, this presentation was given to the commission last in 2019. Um, so we felt as staff that it was important to uh, refresh the commission's memory on the department's consultation policy. Mahalo, Michael. Um, next slide. Um, so this presentation will just cover these four main points. The summary of the policy when it is required, the beneficiary consultation process, changes to the policy um, between 2009 and 2019, and then policy implementation uh, between 2009 and 2019. Next slide. Um, so in 2009, the Hawaiian Homes Commission adopted the department's beneficiary consultation policy. Um, the, the commission recognizes that meaningful, timely, and informative beneficiary consultation is necessary for the successful formulation and implementation of its policies, programs, and projects. In 2009, um, the commission adopted the consultation policy, which is part of your packets as exhibit A of this submittal. The purpose of beneficiary consultation is to ensure that appropriate beneficiary input on activities by the department are incorporated into the department's planning and decision-making. Next slide. So beneficiary consultation uh, per the policy is required for four types of proposals. On one, on statewide policy issues, two, on amendments to land use designations in our island plans, three, development of DHHL plans, so plans within the department's planning system that are articulated in administrative rules, four, uh, development proposals. Um, statewide policies, these often involve revisions to the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, other legislation at the federal, state, or county levels, policy affecting Native Hawaiian rights, examples of completed consult consultations under statewide policies include administrative rule promulgation between 2015 and 2018, and the department's water policy plan in 2013. Amendments to land use designations. These involve amendments to adopted island plan land uses involving a comprehensive, consistent community-based planning process. Examples of completed consultations include the Waimea Nui um, Community Agriculture Initiative or Economic Initiative um, that was completed in 2015, the Mama Park Molokai Special District designation in 2018, and the Honokawai DHL Homestead Development on Maui in 2022. Currently, we are going through the consultation process for a proposed land use amendment for the Kauai Island Plan. Um, development proposals, um, these include revenue generating proposals that are um, brought forth by external uh, parties to the department. So consultations um, include long-term use of DHHL lands um, for either lease or licenses. Consultations are held in the local area most affected. During the pandemic, we did do consultations during Zoom. And also we found that um, Zoom consultations actually um, allow applicants um, a greater opportunity to participate, especially for those that might not uh, immediately reside in the area. Examples of completed consultations include um, renewable energy development in Kahikinui and Maui and Kailua in 2019, and the uh, Teikaha Hawaiian Homestead Association to Wopai Farm and Irrigation Plan back in 2017. Um, also recently, we did um, consultation meetings for a lot, um, um, three non-homestead use of fine homelands in YNI um, in November, and we presented the consultation report in December. And then lastly, uh, the, we do consultation meetings on the development of DHHL plans. These are plans within the department's planning system. So these are the general plan, island plans, program plans, and regional plans. 
in addition to the um, beneficiary consultation, um, the department's policy also allows for informational meetings. Informational meetings occur when a decision has already been made and communication is required in order to ensure knowledge, awareness, and compliance if, if applicable to the action with the particular decision. Next slide. Um, since 2009, two other instances of um, beneficiary consultation being required is one uh, during the Department of Land and Natural Resources leasing of water. So this is DLNR's process or DLNR's leasing of water, not the department's. This is required under HRS 17158G. And then um, most recently, changes to billing rates on department-owned water systems. If you click again, Michael, um, just wanted to illustrate, this is the Department of Land and Natural Resources water leasing process, not DHHL. So just wanted to highlight that at any time the Department of Land and Natural Resource um, contemplates uh, leasing or licensing water, um, it is required to consult with the department's beneficiaries. In partnership with the Department of Land and Natural Resources, DHHL provides or helps DLNR um, with the consultation. So we provide assistance to DLNR to convene the meeting. Next slide. Um, this is the process of the beneficiary consultation that was articulated into, into the 2009 policy. So it's a seven step process, um, identification of the issue. So one of those four items that I previously went over, or actually six items that I previously went over. Um, to notification to our beneficiaries, uh, primarily through um, mail out um, presentation. Um, so we hold the meeting, the meeting is held, we provide the presentation and then we collect feedback. Um, and then after that, um, we collect or we start to develop the consultation report. And then if you can click one more time, Michael. So there was, um, some changes to the process from 2009 and the current practice. Those are highlighted in blue. So currently, you know, we the first three steps are consistent. It's within the last um, four, five, and six steps that are a little bit different. Um, so after we hold the meeting, the current practice is to also allow beneficiaries a 30-day comment period for those that might not have been able to attend due to conflicting um, priorities in their lives. So we do allow an extra 30 days for people to submit their comment on the subject matter. After the 30 days is prepared, uh, I mean, sorry, completed, then the department um, co collects all of the feedback, feedback from the meeting as well as a comment submitted and we prepare a consultation report to be presented to the commission at the next um, regularly scheduled commission meeting. Um, we, we then ask the commission to accept the report as the official um, record of beneficiary comment. And then after the commission accepts the report, then the commission usually uh, provides decision-making on the action. So the consultation report acts as another data point for the Hawaiian Homes Commission uh, to consider as they deliberate on specific actions that are brought forth by the department for your folks' consideration. Next slide. Um, since 2009, the department has identified, has uh, promulgated um, administrative rules which were adopted and approved by the commission um, and the governor um, in 2018. Uh, the administrative rules um, outline the different types of um, consultation practices. So comprehensive, statewide, so those involve statewide policies and programs, place-based, so these are um, actions such as a regional plan that's specific to a specific place or an island plan specific to a specific island or a land use request that is specific to a specific region. Um, so most recent example are the YNI land use requests um, that the commission uh, heard last month. And then uh, the commission may, or the department may choose um, add to form an ad hoc advisory body of um, beneficiaries. A most recent example 
um, is the Kalal Papa Beneficiary Working Group um, that um, the department formed um, to deal or to listen to the Mana'o beneficiaries who have had ties to Kalal Papa to work through some of the issues um, that they have had with the National Park Service. So that body is still um, in existence. Next slide. And then lastly, um, these two websites are two sources where um, members of the public and our beneficiaries can see a listing of beneficiary consultations that the department has held um, since the adoption of the beneficiary consultation policy in 2009. Um, so up until uh, 2020, uh, you can go to the website on the left. And um, it, since 2020, uh, a list of beneficiary consultation meetings can be found um, on the um, website to the right. And in addition, I just like to add that during the pandemic, we were also fortunate enough to, well, unfortunate, I guess, depends on how you look at it. Uh, because of the pandemic, we had to, you know, pivot to Zoom meetings, but it's also allowed us to record those meetings and post it on our website. So in addition to the meeting notes and consultation reports, uh, we have the full um, library of um, meetings that we've held um, on Zoom since the start of the pandemic on our website. Um, and that's my quick presentation to the commission. Um, again, the purpose was just to brief the commission uh, on our consultation policy since the last time we did that was in 2019. So thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions for staff? Chair, I have a question. Um, yes, Andrew, on, on the slide that had the, when we, when we do consultation, I think item four said for a development proposal or something parens external. So I just want to understand that if 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 somebody proposes to do a project, then it has to go through consultation. Correct. So those would be like the matters that uh, the land management division brings to the commission. Right. Um, so when a development proposal comes to the department and the department feels it necessary to um, bring forth to the commission prior to commission action on a long-term use of Hawaiian homelands, um, the department per its consultation policy yeah. um, must consult with So beneficiaries. got that, but the, the exception is if it's a department initiated proposal. So if, if the chair's office wants to, you know, I'll give you an example that chair has proposed in his Five point the proposed five point plan to do vertical uh, construction. That that would not need to go to beneficiary consultation because it's an internal proposal. Is that I, I'm asking? I'm not stating. Um, I I believe um, when the department does do homestead development, for instance, and um, we've done several consultations it's part of our planning process. So I think when we do development plans, um, examples include Hana Pepe, Hana Hoa, Pukopai, I'm only mentioning those because I'm facing Commissioner Neves or um, <laughs> Ma'iwi, um, we, or Hana Kauai, um, we go through our development plan planning process and do consults, like a series of consultation meetings to make sure that the developments that we're proposing are consistent with beneficiary input. Um, I believe, and this is just my opinion, but I believe what um, Chair presented today is not, it's not a plan that is articulated by our administrative rules. To me personally, it is a um, directive to staff on what his administration would like to accomplish. Oh, no, and I wasn't asking that. I was just trying to use an example, but how about the ones you said were, We've we've done a, a residential development, and then we we submit it to uh, beneficiary consultation. We're not obligated to do that. We choose to do that. Is that correct? Is that what that what that slide told told me? Um, if you go back to the slide, um, there are. Or what 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 does external in parentheses ex mean? External means a 
proposal from an outside digital party. To your question on you know, if the department wants to develop a uh, homestead or whatnot, to me, that falls under number three, development of DHHL plans. But, it, but if the plan calls for, if, if it's zoned for, say, housing or for commercial, once we fulfill consistent with the plan and do a housing development, we, we have to submit it to the to beneficiary consultation. I guess what I, during the development of the plan, um, we find that it's a best practice to consult with beneficiaries during the development of that plan. I agree, but, yeah, but yeah. that's a voluntary thing. That's not a that's not a something that we're obligated to do by HAR or whatever. Yeah, so it, it's not something that we're obligated to do by administrative rules, but rather by the policy of the yeah. commission. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Sarah. Yeah, Andrew, thank you. Um, Quick question on on the requirement to do consultation when DLNR leases water. Um, so does DLNR like reach out to us so that we can comply with this, or how, they, how, how they, does that work? Um, yes, uh, DLNR staff does contact us. Um, they have um, that has been the practice in the past. So I think. Um, a recent, actually this isn't super recent, but a recent example is the Wailuku River the water hydro. license. The department conducted yeah. beneficiary consultation, I believe in it 2018 or 2019, but that was at the request of the and I. Right. And are there uh, a lot of these instances where DLNR is leasing out water? I mean, historically or um, his Historically, no. But um, we do anticipate not a lot, but a handful of water license uh, requests from DLNR moving into the future. Is this similar to our position about 30% for us? This is related to that. Okay. Th um, we, we cons so when we went to beneficiary consultation on the Waiwuku River, it was primarily on the department's water reservation request. Is this enough? Is this sufficient? Did we miss anything in, in our request for our res water reservation? Separate but related is the department's entitlement to 30% of the receipts received from water licenses. We have proposed our preferred methodology to appraise water. Um, unfortunately, DLNR disagrees with that method. Um, we requested a contested case on that. Unfortunately, um, the decision was by the NR that the department did not have um, standing on that request. Um, we pivoted our strategy to make sure that the department receives um, sufficient revenue from water licenses to argue that while they didn't accept our appraisal methodology on the rent, um, DLNR does um, administer a watershed management cost share with the water licensee. And we argued that um, that cost share should be included as part of the receipts of the lease. Um, DLNR previously didn't count the watershed cost share as receipts of the water licenses. And their watershed management cost share was about twice as much as they were requiring the water licensee for the rent, the water lease rent. So we felt that that was a significant amount of um, revenue that they were not including in the 30% calculation to DHHL. Um, okay. So we're still trying to resolve that matter um, and we're working with our attorney generals to hopefully bring resolution to that matter. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, I have a question. Yes. So um, a couple of questions, uh, Andrew. On, um, on the beneficiary consultation, the 30-day review period, uh, we just did one recently for, for Anahua. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy to find out 
who you send the response to. Uh, and if I'm having problems running through the site, I can imagine what be my beneficiaries are. Uh, can, can you explain that a little bit? I apologize <laughs> for the inconvenience um, that might have caused. Um, generally, the responses are sent to our planning office email, um, dhhl.planning at hawaii.gov. Um, at the end of our presentations, we usually have that contact information for people to submit um, those comments. But I understand that if you didn't attend the meeting um, and you don't watch the meeting video, you're not gonna get to it. So it's definitely a, a way we can improve in the future to yeah. um, make sure that there's more clarity on where people can submit those comments to. Yeah, and, and I would suggest on the website, since it, since it was a re recent meeting that we put it on the band so it shows up so it's easy to, to access instead of trying to go and try to find it. Because I had to call you and say, okay, who do I send a response yeah. to? So definitely that's a great suggestion and we'll yeah. make that um, change. Thank you. And then the other question I have is um, on a regional plan, most of, most of the regional plan is conceptual, correct? So when people put in for a project in a regional plan, does that have to go through beneficiary consultation? I think if I can make sure I understand your question correctly, if an entity wants to add a project to the regional plan outside of the regional plan <clears throat> process that the commission approved, are you asking? No, what I'm asking is that a conceptual plan, there's certain areas we have a special district and so on and so forth. So, uh, but it's not specific as to what can be placed in. So an entity comes in and says, I wanna put this in um, and has support from within their group. Does that have to go out to beneficiary consultation for all beneficiaries to, to chime in? I'll give you an example in sure. another community. Um, in the Pana Ever Regional Plan, um, the Pana Ever Regional Plan specifically identifies the group and the um, project location for the uh, Keokaha Pana Ever Farmers Association's um, project. Right. In that, so it was identified as a priority project, and usually priority projects identify that level of detail. In the Anohola plan, there were identified five priority projects. In addition to that, there were projects that were raised um, during the planning process that beneficiaries didn't identify as priorities, but felt were good ideas. So we included those in the plans. I believe for those additional projects, um, just to make sure that we clearly communicate with our beneficiaries, we should do, we should have extra conversations on those additional projects just so that there's clarity. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's sort of a, like I said, it's, 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 a, it's a blueprint for what we, we would like to do, but we don't have specifics. Once the specifics come out, then I think we need to have beneficiary consultation on that specific and not all beneficiaries may agree. And I'd like to make sure we have a full voice. Um, the other thing I, I get concerned about especially on out of Hawaii is because we have sort of the east side, west side. We talk to each other, but we don't visit much. I'd like to make sure that when we do have beneficiary consultations on those locations is that we talk to the folks in that location, basically in their MOCA. Uh, that's, that's really important. We don't have an outside, not an outside entity, but our cousins come and tell them, their nephews, what they want to do outside of their mocha. So I, I think it's important that when you do the beneficiary consultation, we have some kind of relevance of, of a, a representative folks that are in that area making those decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any further, anything further for our staff on this item? Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner.
Members, looking at the agenda, number four items for information discussion. A regular items, Homestead Services Division, HSD status reports. Were there anything on that that members had any inquiries about for staff? And commissioners, if you don't have current questions currently, I'll be here tomorrow yeah, and sleep on any questions that you may have. How are you doing, Juan? You okay? I'm good. I'm good. Chair, okay. is that, you're talking about uh, D1? Yeah. Yes. I don't have any questions. Juan, can I ask you, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Can I of ask you, you if you could follow up on, the, um, on this um, homesteaders, on this beneficiary for Nanakuli? Uh, Mr. Patrick James Mitchell Jr., um, 89135 Kawao Avenue. Sorry, Patrick it, James Mitchell Jr. It came from Commissioner um, Hale from Molokai to me, and because it's in Nanakuli, but I have some of the information I'd like to. Okay. See if you could and come back tomorrow, and um, absolutely. Um, we appreciate if, you, if there's a follow up on this. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So move by your thoughts. Right? You have yeah. Thank you, commissioners. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Do we vote yeah. on it or no? No. Oh, nope. no. Oh, okay. No. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, members, that takes us back to agenda item C2. As the other F item, we'll, we'll have to wait till tomorrow because we don't have staff present. Oh, Defer F1. F1. Whatever the G1. And G, likewise. We don't have available staff. <laughs> So that takes us back to C2 members regarding the our conceptual five point plan. Any any further discussion? Yeah, Chair, I thought we had thought to defer to tomorrow. So we haven't taken a vote on that, but that's, we're open to that. I do. I, I like to. Uh, I mean, if it's going to change anything, okay, but well. Other than that, um, if there's, I don't, I'm, yeah. I, I don't see the point if nothing's changed. But I mean, if there, if there's a motion, of course we'll entertain it. If there's a motion, happy, happy to entertain it. So, is there a motion? You want to? So, okay. So, so I can't. Um, so I can't determine if. It's necessarily going to change anything. I think it was initially when it was <clears throat> being offered by Commissioner Nevis, it was just to give more time to think it through because it was a last minute submittal with a bunch of questions and was just to give, give ourselves some time to think about it. You know, and that, that's all it is, but whether or not it will change, I, can, I can't speak to that. So, Look, if the commission wants to move forward now, we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I'll enter. I'm happy to entertain a, a motion, but uh, yeah. Commissioner Namu. Second. Second. Okay. okay, so it's moved and seconded to approve. Then discussion on that item, discussion on the motion that's on the floor. Okay, so I'm I, I would like to share my not all. Please. Yeah, so I'm not going to support the motion. I'm not going to support approval. And it's it's not that um I don't think I think it comes with good intentions, as I have said earlier, but this just isn't the it's more of a statement. And this is a body that makes policy decisions that are fully vetted. And so making the statement is fine, but seeking commission approval 
to support that statement. I just don't think it's necessary. So that's it. Thank you. Fair enough. Members, any further discussion? Yes, Chair. Uh, I, Mr. Nevis. As, as I expressed earlier, um, four of these items are already in the strategic plan moving forward. Um, and I agree that this is normally, this isn't, we, we normally don't um, vote on or approve statements. I prefer that you make uh, a, a statement to, uh, to the WAMP committee and you can provide some detail, uh, but I won't be supporting this motion. Or anything. So noted. Thank you. Thank Members, you. any further discussion on the motion? Yeah. Commissioner Namuo, followed by Commissioner Kalekin. Mr. Chair, um, I look at this, this um, five point plan um, as statements in um, clarifying what your um, vision is. And since four of the statements are part already a part of the plan that the, the uh, commission has already approved, and they are statements. And you already clarified that they are merely statements. I'm okay with approving it today to show our support if we're gonna to move together forward as a team to carry them out. So I I am in support of C P. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner. Um, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So we have a motion, but I know I added into the correction of the motion was to approve Chair Designated Rebecca Anderson's five-point concept concept plan to add that concept into that language. We discussed it, but we didn't make a motion at the time. So can I have that we as a could, friendly amendment to add that item into that um, submittal? Okay. Um, five-point concept plan. Could we just continue the discussion and then, um, Commissioner Turio, when, when we move to you, could you add that in? No. If you'd like, or do you friendly want to do it amendment now? Comes from you going to accept my friendly amendment? The motion? Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So, um, Commissioner Kalekini, you had some remarks, and I'm going to move to Commissioner. Yeah, uh, just brief. I, I just wanted to just restate what I stated earlier. Yeah, I agree four of the five points are within the plan. Um, I, I think that it's important um, that you're following up with the uh, Senate. Um, and for us to support where we can. So I, I know you mentioned to the Senate that you're gonna reach out to the commission and seek our thoughts and our, our support, and I will support. Thank you very much. Yes. Commissioner Toruya for your remarks and your amendments, please. Um, well, there was a motion on the floor, so I, I wanted to add a friendly amendment to please add proceed. five point concept, to add the word concept, plan to the motion. Is there a second? Okay. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Commissioner Torrio, you still have the floor. Do you have any right. further remarks? Yeah, so I second the, that. Uh, original motion right. maker. Because if you have support from the original motion maker, then the friendly amendment will be added in there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any additional points, Commissioner uh, Torrio? No. You still have the floor. No. no. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Hell. Yeah. So what are you taking out? Adding con concept. So are you taking concept. anything out? Out of this? No, just to. You just adding concept. Concept just to support this concept vision that he was going to propose for this day. So you're putting the word concept. Yeah. So he can put something in here. Yeah, I'm going to approve that myself. Okay, Commissioner Perkins. Point of clarity. Are we approving these? Is this plan or statements with uh, and uh, bullet point number four? Are we erasing or striking out also support down payment assistance for those? Yeah, five. No, no, yeah, five point plan. I'm sorry, in, in bullet point number four, we had a discussion earlier about potentially taking out also support down payment assistance for those on the wait list to purchase a home off trust lands. I mean, but with dialogue on that earlier, I just wanted to make sure that we we're clear moving forward. On exactly what was thinking about. So we did have that discussion uh, in executive session, but there hasn't been any motion to that effect here. So if there is a motion to strike 
personal if there is any if there is any desire to uh, reword number four chair we would i would entertain such a motion now chair i, I make a motion that we we remove uh, the last sentence on item four okay so uh, so your motion is to strike anything regarding down payment assistance at all or just off of trust land just at all because it's in line with uh well because well this only refers to off the trust land. this this sentence that's it yes it's right yes that is right so there is a motion on the floor to strike the last sentence do i hear a second motion on the floor second okay. it's been moved and seconded discussion Yes, discussion. So, Mr. Neves, you made you entertain that motion to delete that line item. Um, are, are you so? Is that the intent that you're going to support this motion to go forward? No, I'm by just deleting a motion it? to correct the language. Yeah, yeah, but when we correct the language, you're going to still not support the the concept of this five point plan. Yes, unfortunately, this, <laughs> this I I don't support it because this isn't something that we should be voting on. This is oh. a statement by the director. It's a concept okay. plan. It's a, we okay. already Under have a concept plan. I know, we have you said it six times plan. that okay. you were in a understand. PIG. Understand it. And okay. Commissioner yeah. Nevis, I, I fully respect your right to, to vote as, as you see fit. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Um, but there is a motion on the floor. Commissioner Nevis you received a second to his motion. We are in discussion on his motion to strike the final sentence in number four. We're still discussing that. Was I the second on the motion? I, I've, you know, for Commissioner Taruya, I've offered to make the motion if uh, she feels that's more proper procedure. <laughs> I, was, I was just questioning because he, yeah, you know well, what I mean, he didn't support the concept, but then he supports taking out that that line item of the well, that mortgage, you know, part. Okay, so. so I don't want to. We'll leave it in. Okay. If we, <laughs> again, the motion is still. On the floor, it's been moved, it's been seconded. We're mm -hmm. still in discussion. Yeah, just quick. Commissioner Kaleki. Yeah, you Chair, have the floor. Yeah, Mahalo. Just, just to, so I'm on the same page. What we're striking is to use down payment on non trust lands. Correct. That's correct. The existing plan already has the flexibility to use funds for on trust lands. Correct. That's what I wanted to clarify. Thank you, Mike. Aware. Fully aware. Okay, so if there's no further discussion, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. No. No, we, 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 no, no, this is- We're voting on the amendment. This right? is on the amendment. Oh, this is on your sorry. amendment. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. We are voting on, we're voting on uh, Commissioner Nevis amendment that was seconded by- Me. Okay, so all in favor of the amendment. Say aye. Aye, aye. aye. Any opposed to the amendment? Say no. So everyone in favor. So the ayes have it. We have amended it. We have amended the yeah. item to strike the final sentence in number four. Okay. Now we're back to the main motion. The main motion with the friendly amendment. With the amendment from Commissioner Taruya. That's where we are now. Is there any further discussion on the amendment that was offered by Commissioner Namuo, seconded by Commissioner Teruya, and then amended further by Commissioner Teruya? Chair, call for the vote, please. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Okay. So, noting the objections of Commissioner Awo and Commissioner Nevis, the motion passes. Okay, hey members, uh, just to re go over the items that we have for tomorrow, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, can we please go? Can we just uh, please restate the items that have been moved from today to tomorrow? Can I know which tomorrow's agenda is F1, item F1, um, approval to amend right of entry permit for the Kahawk Community Alliance 
and executive session item number three, discussion on delinquent right of entry permit. Um, and then item D1, briefing on the United States Department of Agriculture, Federal Funds for Water System Development. <laughs> So, Leah, what is this right of entry? You have one tomorrow, right? Yes. Yeah, with exit 131. Yes. I don't know the exact set. The ROE, yeah. I have a question. Um, Commissioner, to read a uh, question. You. So, um, after tomorrow's meeting, we have a contested case hearing. Will you be doing the contested case hearing? Yes, I'll be here for that. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Uh, yeah, on my um, question regarding SIC, is there any way someone can um, be present tomorrow and give me some answers regarding the issue on Molokai with the Wi Fi? We will ask staff before that. I go back to Molokai. <laughs> yes. Are they going to be. <laughs> 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 yes. Mahalo. Yes, we will ask Thank you. for appropriate Disney. staff to be here. Chair, on, on stuff like that, so, so staff can, can talk to commissioner, but we can't, it's not an item in the meeting now yeah, because we didn't agenda. Yeah. But if, even if it's not agenda, if it's a matter that may come before the yeah. commission, you could still have potential sunshine issues if we discuss it. Yeah, so so to address but, but that. talking to staff is absolutely yeah, fine. Got it. That's Thank absolutely you. okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Members, any further discussion on any items this evening? If not, then we will. Oops. Yes, please come forward. As yes, amended. as amended. Yes. 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 So then the other question I had is both 10.23 and 11.23 going forward. What is your question? So uh, C2. Um, yes. Your five point statement mm -hmm. slash plan is um, going to, I mean, be part of eleven twenty three, right? The the C one C one. What she said. I think. Yeah, she speaks for it. It's going to take tomorrow. So the ten twenty three was then the strategic um, the department two seventy nine plan. 1123 is the one that was presented today. Are they both going forward? Yeah, I'm not certain uh, what numbers you're that. referring to. I'm not sure what, what references the numbers that you're referring to have. It's the bill. It's the bills. The bills don't have a number, so I can't refer to them. Okay. So Anthony, are you talking about the approval of the of the potential extension in C1? You know what? Slap my head. Yeah. I guess it's it like yeah, are no, they both going to go forward? We did approve accepting a proposal. I uh, we did yeah, approve I'm sorry. accepting an extension. One is, excuse me, if one is offered, yes. And, and we are still pursuing the our our bill, which was a technical fix. That's for, my question. I'm sorry, I was on the wrong. Which not we were C2, but C1 doesn't may not work. In your advice, we have some issues. Yeah. What's the answer? So, yes, we will accept both. an extension. So, they're yes. both going forward, right? We're accepting an extension, yes. No, that's not my question. My question is is the bill that was approved by the commission, 1023, and the one that was presented today, 1123, are they both going forward? That's my question. Yeah. Chair, Chair, yeah. 
just for clarification, in the strategic plan, there are certain uh, legislative goals that are presented. Correct. That's right. And what, what Auntie's talking about is HHL 1023 relating to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. She's asking if that's going to move forward as well as the new bill, which would be 11, the proposal you made moving forward. Are they both going to move With forward? With the blank date. The other one has a date. This one doesn't have a date. Are they both going to move forward? Because 10 is already at the ledge. This one has to go to the ledge. Provided the legislature introduces this one. Yeah. Which I don't know if they will. So this is what you're going to present at the meeting on Thursday. Um, 11. I'm going to say on Thursday that the commission will vote it to accept an extension should the legislature offer one. Nothing has been offered yet in that regard. So what we voted on today in item C1 is accepting an extension if one is offered. One has not yet been offered. So there's no bill to do that as of today, as far as I know. Then it, but it was drafted as a bill. The other measure that you're mentioning was drafted as a bill, yes. Two separate things. So the thing that we talked about today is simply accepting an extension should one be offered by the legislature. There were some at, at the committee who were saying that the legislature may ex entertain an extension, may. Okay. There was no commitment to an extension being offered or if one is offered, what type of extension that may be. Okay, so just, I'm sorry, Chair, and thank you for being so patient with no, me. It's okay. So what I understand is that 1123 that was discussed today is what you're going to take to the meeting on Thursday to discuss with the committee. And this committee is or isn't going to decide whether or not they will give you an extension. And at that committee meeting, a date would be inserted. No, I think we're not discussing any of those measures. With then the why are we having this bill go forward? Chair, chair, if I can, so C1 has attached to it a proposed that bill with, with blanks in it. That, that I understand. That's that was, numbered 1123. That I understand. That's what, that's what Auntie's asking. That I understand. So what we did today, Auntie, is merely state that if the legislature should offer an extension, we support it. That's all. It may look like this. It may not. Nothing has been, no commitment was made last week, Tuesday, yeah. to offer an extension. What is important it that we about. are together supporting it. Yeah, no, I understand what you're all trying to do. Yeah. The way it appears and the way it looks to beneficiaries is that there's two bills that, because it's written, that's what was submitted. And that's what I mean, that when you do a submittal and the staff prepares it, whether it's a one page statement or whether it's a full blown submittal, all of that documentation is part of the submittal. Therefore, that is what you're supposed to be looking at. And that is what you're voting on. The recommendation and the motion, that's what, I, that's what we here in the audience is expecting that the commission is voting on. So if it wasn't intended to be in the form of a bill and that you would just come to ask this commission, would they consider then I wouldn't have a problem with it, but that's in the form of a bill. So that's in the form of a bill that was attached to the report that was submitted last month, a conceptual bill. As of right now, that bill was submitted to the governor for his consideration to introduce as part of his legislative package. I don't know if he's accepted it yet. Are we talking about 10 or 11? Because we're in my talking mind, about 11 just came on board. We're talking about the Bill, the proposed bill that's attached to the uh, C1. C1. Yes. For C for C1. Yes. Which is 11. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so it's a you're concept. saying that was prepared last month? Because what I heard earlier was that that was prepared when you came aboard. No, that was submitted last month to the legislature as part of the package. Right. 10 was, 11 okay. wasn't. 11 was, yeah. 11 is on, on, on C1, <clears throat> on page two of C1, proposed summary shows proposal HHL 1123. I, I think, I, I understand Lefua prepared this anticipating that 
we would approve uh, C1. And this is what the bill would look like prospectively. This is the and, this is the ARPA fix. Yeah. And, and I'm, you know, not like who are being there, I don't want to speak for her, but this proposal is 1123. This bill attached. Look at the bottom. This bill attached is what we're asking the ledge to approve. 11 23. Correct. Correct. That's what was attached to what was submitted to the Today. legislature. Today. That, that's attached to this, to what we approved in one. That we approved, yes. Yeah. Yes. So when, when we go for approval, yes. this bill accompanied, and that's what she's asking, is this yes. bill going to be accompanied that? Yes. So my question again, one more time, is regardless of whether or not you get the extension, this bill is now going to go forward. So in the ledger, there's going to be two bills, 1110-23 and 11, wait, I'm sorry, 1023 and 1123. These both are going forward. My, my understanding. I'm seeing a yes over here. Well, that is not, my, that is not, that is not my understanding. Well, well, hold John. on, hold on, hold on. I can only speak- Commissioner from, Neves and then yeah. Commissioner Kuhu. I, I can only speak from, from uh, my knowledge of the uh, strategic plan. Strategic plan, uh, the Hawaiian Homes uh, bill was uh, 1023. That has already been submitted. Correct. Now we're going to submit a new bill based on what we just approved today under C1 Correct. as 1123. Yes, Correct. both bills should be moving okay. forward. Then let me, so, so are you- yes. Are, are you asking me, Auntie, based on what we voted on today, that we would accept an extension? You're asking That's me what if you did already by accepting 1123. So what I'm asking, are you asking us if we're going to introduce a bill based on the exception that we voted on today? Is that what the extension? Is that what you're asking? I'm sorry. I'm just okay. Let me just breathe right now. Okay. My question, Chair Designate Anderson, is this. When yes. I testified here, I asked yes. the question. Is 10 and 11 going to the ledge so that I know which one I'm going to support? The answer that I heard was that it's going to go to this meeting because there's a potential opportunity for an extension. Yes. There's a potential so, opportunity for an extension. Okay. And this is the document that's going to provide. That. No. Then why do we even no, have the Because document? the legislature may, at their discretion, say that they want, that they're willing to do an extension. And it's, again, at this point, it's hypothetical. But if one of the senators or more of the senators ask if we do an extension that we haven't agreed to yet, is the commission in agreement with an extension? Now I can say yes. As to what bill will be introduced, now we need to wait to see what the legislature does. No, if they're you even don't. going to entertain it. In my humble opinion, sir, this commission voted to approve Act 279 plan that included 1023. This morning, your approval on C1 approved that bill. That's 1123. That's going forward. Understand. Whether you have this meeting or not, Understand. whether or not they choose to extend it, Understand. that bill is going forward. Understand. Okay. That so just enables me to say that since I've been in my tenure on the commission, we did take a vote and we would accept an extension. That's all it was. That was the only purpose. So I can unequivocally, absolutely, certainly say, yes, I was sitting here when the commission said yes, that's all. But whether or not the legislature will do this or won't, I don't know, but there was talk at the Senate Ways and Means Committee last week that some senators may be willing to entertain that. But no definitive decision was made and no definitive timeline for a, an extension was offered. So maybe a better way for me to put this is if that doesn't happen, then I'm not going to see 1123 on the docket and I don't have to worry about it. I'm sorry, what are you asking now? I'm asking you that if what you just said and you go to this meeting mm -hmm. and there's no offer of extension, mm -hmm. 
that this doc that this is not going to be on the docket. 1123 is not going to be on the docket. You're going what are you going to do with it? It's up to the legislature whether they're going to hear no, it. No, it's whether not. not. It's up to this department. I are mean, you asking I us if we're wrong. going to you talk what, about maybe it? Maybe somebody should call it who because now I'm getting frustrated. Uh, Chair, Chair if all, I, I could. I Simple question. I don't know if I'm. We'll wait till they was on her way back. We'll wait till she gets here. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I just want to be clear. No, I, I think no, no I problem. think your line of questioning is important. Agree. Um. Yeah. So it's absolutely okay to hear slavery. Only because, as always, as I said earlier, my kulian is to protect the trust. That includes Understand. you. That includes the department. Understand. Fully. And I don't want to go up there looking like an idiot. Understand when I'm trying to support you. Understand fully. And no offense taken whatsoever. You have every right to ask these questions. Thank They're you. pertinent. So, Lihua, can you come forward? So, Lihua, my question this morning when I was testifying here was that Act 279 plan included 1023. Correct. That is a bill that's already been drafted. It has been sent to the ledge. It's going to go on the docket at some point. We expect it to be in the governor's package, yes. Okay. Are we certain that it'll be in the governor's package? Last indication I got was the only bill that was being pulled. We already knew um, proposal one and two was not in the governor's package. Okay. Those bills have never made it in the governor's package. I was recently told that um, proposal six, the compliance and enforcement is not gonna be part of the governor's package. Okay. As far as I know, number 10 is going to be in the governor's package. That's the last. Okay. information I received. Now the bill that Auntie is talking about, is it definitively, absolutely, certainly, is it in the package or we don't know? Number 10, as far as I know, I was not in, I was not told that it was not gonna be part of the governor's package. So when Have he you been does told this, it is? I was told we had preliminary approval. Okay, but not definitive yet. I, I think the team is reviewing, but when he gives his state of the state address, that will be the package, all the bills will get introduced that day which is in one week from now. Okay. Got it, right? Because ledge opens tomorrow. Okay, 1123. So the, the enforcement, um, can you repeat that part? I was recently told that the governor um, was not in support of HHL 06. So that was gonna be pulled from the package. Um, and the only way that that could be uh, included is for chair designate to have the conversation with the governor. What I can say is we spoke to a senator and he has agreed to introduce the bill. So whether or not it makes it into the governor's package, right now we do have indication that that bill will be introduced and we have a house draft prepared and we're gonna well, seek a, a representative to introduce it on the house side. Very good. Very good. They were same for one and two. One and two, I did speak to <coughs> Senate, Chair of Senate Hawaiian Affairs. As far as I know, she was going to introduce one and two. And then we're going to try. Remind me, what, what is one and two? One is Independent Council. Two is CWEB. Yeah. Two and is? Co Commissioner Waters. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you what senator is going to introduce that? Um, Six, Senator Kiho Kalole. Thank you. Okay. It's good to know so I can malama and thank you. Alehua. Okay. Thank you. Question. So, oh, question. So, uh, so we took an action today to approve eleven, which is a request for an extension. Correct. So, and part of the my thought process in supporting that was that I thought I heard ten twenty three does not solve the problem. 1023 does not solve the problem, but frankly, I will admit to this commission, neither does 1123. Okay, so that's Where a legally, bit disturbing. We run into the issues which we talked about in, we ran into the issues we talked about in executive session. There are constitutional issues that we're still up against that we're trying to resolve. And so until we can overcome that issue, we're still gonna be in this boat, but we're, we're gonna make every effort to resolve these issues with the legislature. I think that's what the chair designate is saying. Let me go back, tell the senators that 
I have the agreement from the commission to allow for an extension if the legislature is so inclined. And to his credit, if one of the senators is so inclined to introduce that legislation, then we can work with them to introduce it. It will likely do. not look in the format it is, but I was just trying to put something on the table for you folks to even consider that the concept of an extension. Um, and we'll have to work through the particulars probably with BNF and the AGs to get the exact um, requirements. I, again, we're after the same goal. It's how we, yes. how we accomplish it. So 11, the so-called 11 that was submitted, um, it's not a bill. It's not even a proposal. It was an example of what it could look like, right? It's a proposal that we prepared, but again, we knew that there are legal challenges. Right? Yes, yeah. that we're trying to overcome. And I think we all are aware and we're trying to figure out what is the best way forward to accomplish that. And oftentimes bills don't look <clears throat> as the same as we introduced it once it goes through BNF and AG review. It sometimes doesn't come out looking in the exact same format, but we're trying to accomplish the result that we're after. So I think we understand what we're trying to accomplish. It's how we're going to go about accomplishing it. Okay, so um, the legal challenges you are referring to, is that the constitutional mandate that limits um, what we can spend within the three-year window, right? Correct. Yeah, so, so what's currently likely to move forward, 1023, there's an acknowledgement that even if, if it does move forward, it does not solve the problem. Correct. Now, in our decision to approve 1123, um, that doesn't necessarily solve the problem, but it, it's an opening into a possible solution is what you're saying. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so you have one shot on the shotgun, you got two shots in the shotgun. Done. That's what you're intending, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, two shots in the shotgun. And then, Leho, one more thing. Um, going back to uh, HHL 10 23. Yes. Will that, do we know whether or not that will definitively be in the governor's package, or we're still not sure? The last in indication I received from the governor's office was it was going to make it into the governor's package. Now, if that changes, if they're going to decide to go say with BNF's potential proposal, I haven't been informed of that. But as of my last information, it was intended to be included in the governor's package. So intended is nothing to think about. So. so not to throw any more coal in the fire, but with 1023, if it goes through and there's discussion at the committee, then can discussion move towards, well, if that doesn't suit you, what will? And would we, how would you extend it? So what typically happens during the legislative process is probably BNF and the AGs will all submit testimony and they'll probably say, oh, this legislative fix or that legislative fix. And then it's for that committee to decide which version they would like to see move forward if it's the BNF's version or the AG's version. That's, so that's the typical process. We got it. Thank you very much, Chair, again, and commissioners for indulging me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your question. No need to apologize. That's what we're here for. No need to apologize at all. Thank you. Okay. So members, we will recess until 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Uh, may I have a motion? Do we need a motion or no? Okay. Thank you so much. So without objection, we will go into recess until 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you.